Hi. Steve, thanks. Good choice. That'd be fifty-two ninety-nine. Thanks. Thanks. Repco. It starts with the parts. Steve, thanks. Good choice. That'd be fifty-two ninety-nine. Thanks. Thanks. Repco. It starts with the parts. From the outside, who would know what lies beneath? Unleash it with a machine as savage as you are. Lenovo Legion. Stylish outside, savage inside. The Repco Supercars Pro E Series is proudly brought to you by Repco. It starts with the parts. Repco Supercars Pro E Series is proudly brought to you by Repco. It starts with the parts. Steve, thanks. Good choice. That'd be fifty-two ninety-nine. Thanks. Thanks. Repco. It starts with the parts. Steve, thanks. Good choice. That'd be fifty-two ninety-nine. Thanks. Thanks. Repco. It starts with the parts. From the outside, who would know what lies beneath? Unleash it with a machine as savage as you are. Lenovo Legion. Stylish outside, savage inside. The Repco Supercars Pro E Series is proudly brought to you by Repco. It starts with the parts. Major racetrack, 
to every iconic corner. With a full field of supercars to places they've never been before. Our E-Series drivers are set, ready to battle it out for the ultimate E-Series championship. We're set for sensational action. This is round one of the Repco Supercars Pro E-Series. Well, the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship may have wrapped up in fine style at Bathurst, but it doesn't mean that the action has to stop there. We've got six huge weeks coming your way, and this is night one of the Repco Supercars Pro E-Series. Welcome, everybody. We had so much fun a few months ago with the All-Star Race that we decided, Jonathan Simon, to bring it back again. But this time, it's the Pro Sim Races, and we have every single team up and down pit lane for the Supercars Championship covered. How exciting is that? It's going to be awesome. We've got the biggest field in Supercars E-Series history. We've got the best of the best returning this series as well. It's going to be awesome. So for us as well, we'll what we also have is every Supercars team committing yep. to the championship. And it's the third year running for our E-Series, second on iRacing, so the best of the best return from 2019. And there they are, including Josh Rogers, who's the man almost right in the middle, the reigning champion for Walkinshaw Andretti United. He's moved to Germany and he's joining us tonight. Where are we racing? A couple of cool tracks. Detroit, that's first up. Belle Isle and Silverstone as well. But that's cool, a street circuit, an IndyCar circuit. Feels like home starting on, on a street circuit like we normally would in Adelaide. And it's going to be tough to overtake at. Race two is a reverse grid event, so your fastest drivers are going to start from the back. The third one is based on accumulated points. That's the grid. It's going to be the long one for race three at Silverstone. Uh, great to see as well. So looking forward to this one, Chad, as well. Yep. Not, we don't normally visit street circuits on the iRacing service. There's only two of them, and we visit those in the opening two rounds. Yeah, so pretty cool. Uh, as you can tell, we're also wearing pink, so we're raising awareness uh, for breast cancer. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October, and we're raising some money for breast cancer trials. So we're going to be plugging that all night. We want you to give generously uh, it's to a great cause. So like we mentioned, Belle Isle in Detroit is the first track up tonight, and it's the focus for our very first Next Level Racing track preview. So here we jump to Detroit, Michigan, the home of Ford, and it's only right we bring the Mustang to a circuit like this. Fourth gear through the first couple of corners through here. Look at this bump on the exit. This is actually a bridge that runs over a canal located here at Belle Isle, one of many canals. Best overtaking spot, this is a hot spot into turn three. 250 kilometers an hour, and look at the dashboard as well. Downshifting to second, this lap is by Jackson Susland Harlow, who's racing for Brad Jones Racing this season. Middle sector, 90 degree corners. Late apex through this next left-hander. You want him to turn in later than you think. That can actually be an overtaking opportunity and then turn in earlier than you think into this next right-hander in close proximity with the walls. The Canadian border is to the left-hand side. We're gonna stay in US territory and stay to the right here because watch this. You wanna straight line the braking zone into here, turn seven, a circuit. Belle Isle that hosts IndyCar racing action. That's what this is famous for. We're bringing big, heavy supercars into here. You don't want to be trail braking. And I always speak about this car, especially around a circuit like this, is an egg and spoon race on wheels. It's so difficult to get this car around such a tight and nifty circuit. Bumpy under traction over here. Downshift into the final couple of corners. Get the best feel for the car, that's what a Thrustmaster wheel can give you, the best wheel, a next level racing wheel, wheel gives you the best comfort through here, you don't want to be in the walls either. And coming out of the final corner, full throttle through there, that's the lap of Belle Isle. So it takes just under about 90 seconds. It's a very busy lap. Nicely done, Jonathan, by the way. Uh, missing all those walls and jumping over the curbs plus pit stops is going to be really, really exciting. Uh, coin qualifying has already taken place earlier in the night. And would you believe it? Similar story to what we saw in 2019. He hasn't taken long to get back on top and picking up 500 Australian dollars worth of cryptocurrency. Josh Rogers. Well done to him. Fourth pole position of his E-Series career in seven attempts. He's unstoppable. He's one of the best sim racers in the world. He's racing from Germany this year, though. He's made the move to the sim racing team house over there, and he's joined the big guns in his team, and so has Dane Warren this year, but Dane Warren remains an Australian resident. Yeah, so how cool is that? So he's already picked himself up 500... Uh Australian dollars worth of cryptocurrency thanks to Coin. Fantastic to have a brand new sponsor in them. Uh, and also Seiko 5. So great to have Seiko 5 on board for the Seiko 5 shootout. We pick the top five in qualifying trim and send them out there. And the prize for the quickest over two laps, a brand new Seiko 5 watch.
field is set. Five drivers for the Seiko 5 shootout. They're queuing up alongside Josh Rogers and Andrew Gilliam. They have been the two quickest. They are on the front row. Cooper Webster, Forzan El Nabi and Dane Warren wrap up the top five. A pair of Walkinshaw and Dreddy United cars have qualified. Who's going to win the very first Seiko 5 watch? Now remember, it's a right-hand corner into turn one, which might just suit the 44, but Rogers has a really good start and manages to close off and across into turn one. Turn two, Al Nabi falls into fourth position, tucks in behind Cooper Webster as they race up towards turn three. Webster on the defensive side of the track, and it's a chance for Warren to go around the outside. That'll be bold three wide to turn three. And Warren backs out of it. There's just no room around the outside. It narrows oh. on exit, and how did they both make it through? Somehow, that was a huge slide, very cold tyres. It was a slow roll around before the start. A rolling start Ooh. to Warren again, aggressive to the inside of Webster and feeds him all the way out and into the fence. So heavy contact for the Seiko 5 car in the Seiko 5 shootout. He is not going to be getting the watch today. This is only a two lap sprint. Rogers looks like he's going to... He's going to have a new timepiece at the end of this. He's running away with it. Gilliam's keeping him honest, though. I think Gilliam's tyres are starting to come to him throughout this lap. You don't need to worry about tyre wear, do you? But it's the temperature, Chad, because the formation lap was so slow here to begin this heat. Yeah, well, he was so aggressive down into turn one, wasn't he? Closing the lead off from Andrew Gilliam. Walkinshaw Andretti United versus Tickford. BP Ultimate Racing, then the second of those Walkinshaw cars. And then Seiko 5 Racing out the back. Love heat racing action. This is a really cool way to kick off the night at the beginning of the night before the first race. This doesn't pay championship points, doesn't set the grid. It's all about getting your hands on that watch. Final lap. Rarely does Josh Rogers make a mistake. And Andrew Gilliam will be praying that he gets his hands on a Seiko 5 watch at the end of this. But Josh Rogers, I think right now the pressure's off. Less than a lap to go. Field spread out. I like the fact that Cooper Webster's continued because remember Stephen Bradbury back in Salt Lake City? <laughs> five competitors in that one, five Ooh. in this one. Well, that was close. He dropped the left rear onto the grass. If there's ever a way to make a mistake, around Belle Isle, it could have been there. Got away with it. Feed the power on through this right-hander. Watch out for the wall on driver's right. Jumps out at the last moment. Onto this long back straight. Going to reach about... 245 virtual kilometers per hour, six gear. Dive on the brakes up towards turn seven. Lovely, doesn't lock up the brakes at all, uses the lower part of the curb so it doesn't un unsettle this suspension too much. Slow part of the racetrack here, long radius left-hander. He's just gonna focus. This is a warm up for this evening for Josh Rogers. And through the slowest corner of the lap, this is it. He's got a couple more corners to go. I think he's got it. I'm glad there's going to be a reverse grid race for him tonight because <laughs> he's clearly got the speed. Will he be able to pass cars later on if he can win the first race? Couple corners to go for Walkinshaw and Andretti United. And this has been the perfect start for Josh Rogers. Grab that Seiko 5 watch and send it all the way over to Gronau, Germany because it's Josh Rogers who takes the Seiko 5 shootout. Well done to him. Job done. He's won himself the watch. And we are not too far away from going green on the very first race. So a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Repco Supercars Pro E-Series is proudly brought to you by Repco. It starts with the parts. Steve, thanks. Good choice. That'd be fifty-two ninety-nine. Thanks. Thanks. Repco. It starts with the parts. From the outside, who would know what lies beneath? Unleash it with a machine as savage as you are. Lenovo.
Volvo Legion. Stylish outside, savage inside. Hi, Steve, thanks. Good choice. That'd be $52.99, thanks. Thanks. Repco, it starts with the parts. The Repco Supercars Pro E-Series is proudly brought to you by Repco. It starts with the parts. So cool to have your company for the opening night. We love Detroit, we love the E-Series. Great to have you here for the Repco Supercars Pro E-Series. And that is our first track, Bell Isle in Detroit, street circuit not too far away from getting into it. I uh, hope you're enjoying the coverage. Fox Sports, KO, Supercars on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. So many cool ways to stay abreast of the 2020 action. So let's get into it. Our Repco Race Facts for the very first track of the night. And this is going to be an interesting one. Tough old street circuit, Jonathan. Yeah, certainly it is. Very liable to, to bin the car here, which is going to be tough. Uh, what you've got to note for this series is that there is one compulsory pit stop each driver needs to make. You don't need to take fuel in this race. You can survive with the 65 litres that you begin the race on. That one compulsory pit stop, you must take four tyres, and you cannot take it on the final lap of the race. Pit lane times here, about 23.2 seconds we're expecting on average for a driver to lose with that tyre stop. How cool is that? We've got them covered all around the country, some over in uh, New Zealand as well. We've got drivers in Germany making the journey to be part of this tonight. Seiko 5 grid for the very first race of the championship. How cool is this? And it's the champ on the front row. It's Walkinshaw Andretti United, Josh Rogers and Tickford Andrew Gilliam. Forza and Al Nabi in the BP Ultimate striking cover. Uh, livery on that one alongside <laughs> the minis car of Dane Warren. Back we go through Cooper Webster and Jake Burton at Brad Jones Racing. Loving the Jared Philcell Red Bull car. That's the only uh, triple eight car on the grid. Richard Hampstead alongside him. Madison down for Brad Jones Racing. Jordan Caruso was picked first out of the draft. Jackson Susan Harlow, we went for a ride with him in our track preview. Ethan Griggolt makes the switch from GRM. Sam Blacklock in the famous 17, the only Shell V power car on the grid. Josh Anderson for local legends racing. Harley Haber, got some real world experience. Check out the Ben Smith pink mobile. That's the Castrol <laughs> Kelly racing car. Brady Myers alongside James Golding. Yes, that's the James Golding. Emily Jones, the only woman in the field, alongside Josh Muggleton with the bright pink wheels. Jake Blackall for Knight Rider Designs and Job Stewart for Erebus. Round out the 22 car grid. All supercars teams are racing in the championship this year. A huge expansion from the 12 cars that we had last year. Yeah, There's big, the champ. Biggest grid, as we said. And here we go, ready to go for this 14 lapper. All right, there is Barney the Flagman. He's back too. This is iRacing and this is the Repco Supercars Pro E Series, the very best in the world. You will not find faster drivers online to handle these beasts around this circuit. Green flag in the air for the first race of the championship. And it's the 25 for Walkinshaw and Dreddy United. Josh Rogers with the perfect start, last year's champion. He's already picked himself up a Seiko 5 watch. He's picked himself up 500 cryptocurrency dollars as well, thanks to Coin. And he is just about to try and search for 75 championship points. We go down into turn three. Accident prone spot. Oh, We've already right got a on Q. Q. Shelby Power Racing, Sam Blacklock went way down the escape road. There he is. That was big. And he already had an awful getaway off the line. He lost about two, three positions off the start, and he was in amongst it. And that's what caused all the bottlenecking into that corner. Jared Philsell, the second best driver from last year, down three positions on the first lap to 10th. He's almost outside the top 10 in his first race for Triple Eight and Red Bull HRT. Good passing opportunity down at Turn 7. It's difficult, though. There's a little bit of games going on in the background as well. Forza El Nabi under pressure. Jake Burton, Brad Jones racing, tucked in behind him. You're on board now with Dane Warren. 
Dane has made that move across from Triple Eight to be part of Walkinshaw and Dreddy United this year. Oh, have a look at this. Slowest corner on the racetrack. There's no margin for error. And if this is the first time you've ever seen iRacing, or the E-Series for that matter, it's amazing, isn't it? You look at these onboard shots, you look at the detail in the anti-roll bars, the gear shifters, the steering wheel, the dash. It's perfect. These liveries are just about perfect as well. It's so cool to watch, and it's a great way to bring you more supercars action once the season has finished up this year. The most perfect part of iRacing is, are the circuits. They actually bring a laser scan here, a laser scanner, I should say, and scan every millimetre, every nook and cranny, so it's accurate. So you feel every bump as you drive, and so would Jake Burton here as he approaches turn three. He remains in Nick Perkat's Dunlop Racing number eight. Big fan of Nick Perkat as well is Jake Burton and he's a great fit for Brad Jones Racing. Well, we found our first Lenovo Savage moment of the night, and it was down at turn three. Three drivers caught up in this one. Oh, Sam wow. Blacklight caught the worst part of that one, as well as, I think that was Ethan Grigault. Yep, in the Shannon's car. So Ethan Grigault was a sitting duck. Sam Blacklock, and here he is on screen, looks like Tony D'Alberto. <laughs> he does look a lot like Tony, tucked away in the Shell V-Power colors. So cool to see how pro all their setups look with the sponsor boards, the lighting. Great work, every single one of these drivers getting onto the virtual grid tonight for the first of six nights of big racing. So talking strategy now, the tyres last three laps here. Look how oh, cool no. the car's <laughs> look. <laughs> Zane Warren's had a bit of a shunt already in his oh. sim, and the whole world's come crashing down on him. Good thing he didn't have anything too embarrassing going on behind the sponsor board tonight. Oh. He's got away with one there. When he pits, he might be able to get out and fix that up. In an eight-second pit <laughs> stop. <laughs> He had to take his seat belts off, I think. Is he wearing them? He's wearing the gloves. The good drivers do have the belts worked into their sim. I don't think he's got any idea that's happened behind him right now. He won't care about that. As they work, lap number three. Who's going to be first to dive into the pits? If you're new to this, tyre wear, damage. Look, there's a car missing a rear boot and rear wing, for example. Goodness gracious. For Jackson, Susan Harlow, Brad Jones Racing. And the Cup Cadet car, similar to what Todd Hazelwood was running. So this will affect the handling of the cars. Particularly steering can cop a whack around here being a street circuit. And you can choose to fix that up in the pit stops, but it will cost you time. The balance front to rear for Jackson, Susan Harlow will be terrible. The downforce, you'll have a pretty oversteery car, especially through this <laughs> corner, as Josh Rogers looks like he's running away with the race win here. Now, strategy is open for Rogers at this stage. No one can really undercut him, and he has plenty of time to react. But looking at your top 10, the surprises so far are Dane Warren down in sixth. That's due to poor qualifying position. And same for Jared Philsell. They are the two that we're expecting this championship to challenge Josh Rogers. And it was essentially a team trade between Warren and Philsell from last year. Remember, they each represented the opposite team. Now they're representing Triple Eight for Philsell and Walkinshaw for Warren, respectively cool was that shot as they bounce along the curbs and then make that run down sunset drive 14 turns 3.79 kilometers it's been hosting indycar events back since 1992 and into the pits comes uh, dane warren so that is aggressive to be the first driver in he will get an advantage early on and he brings his own ride behind him and jared philsell into the pits as well now pit stop times are randomly generated they operate between seven and ten seconds roughly Let's see if Phil Cell in the Red Bull car can maybe make up a position in pit lane. Hopefully he gets some luck. Phil Cell cops the short straw, and if he does this time, you won't be happy with it. It really is luck-based. Rocking a bit of a Shane Van Gisbergen beard there. And if anything, uh, he's definitely lost some time to the middies. Oh, he must have damage. Level one car. Maybe he's doing some damage fixing going on. We didn't see him make any contact out there. Well, the, you whacked a wall at some point. The pit stop's 10.7 seconds, so that tells me he's got damage. No normal pit stop for, for four tyres takes that long with the random generated number. So something's gone wrong for Jared Philsell. And so the undercut won't work for him, I guess. He might lose another position and fall outside your top 10 because overtaking is so difficult around this street circuit. Andrew Gilliam under pressure now in the 44. The James Courtney car, boost mobile colours. About this pack. They're queuing up behind Brady Myers in the Pioneer DJ car. I love that. And Emily Jones in this fight as well. Arguably the most popular of our E Series stars in the field. Has a huge following online. Has a bit of a different pathway. Hasn't always been exclusively on iRacing. Did a lot of uh, Gran Turismo. A lot of GT Sport. I think she's a factory Audi driver as well on GT Sport, which is pretty cool. 
<laughs> Look how beaten up Josh Anderson's car is, and he comes into the pits. Surely with some damage to fix. The left hand side of that car was completely kicked in. Emily's car looking picture perfect for BP Ultimate. Uh, keep an eye out for all the pink dashes and colours and splashes on these cars as well throughout the course of the night, as well as our pink shirts here in the host desk. We're raising money tonight for the Pink Fundraiser. So go to pinkfundraiser.com.au. All of the teams have their own account that you can tip some money into tonight to help raise some much needed funds for the breast cancer trials. And this will really go a long way uh, to hopefully maybe even saving some lives. And for a few drivers in the field, this is a really close to home subject. So they're all keen to try and beat each other and raise the most money tonight. And have a look at this, Jared Philsell. Oh, oops. oops, great save, Madison down. Wow, that was nearly first down. <laughs> Going into turn three, he nearly sprayed that everywhere. He's the only driver running uh, on Oculus Rift, which is the virtual reality system that you can see on his face. And so some drivers don't opt to use that because it can make you a little bit motion sick. Not running a motion simulator, and according to the back of his shot, he's got a few textbooks he's got to read after this race, I'd assume. <laughs> yeah. we'll, do some, uh, we'll do some tax reports later on tonight <laughs> by the looks of it. Here we go. Here's your Repco replay. So it was Phil Cell on the charge, had the spot almost covered. Oh, I don't think they touched. That's awesome. And down, just locking the rears. Now, we do have a driving standards observer in this championship. It's not Craig Baird like it was for the All-Stars. We've got Craig Dontis back. Uh, he was on the job last year for this championship as well. Not the best job to have in the world, <laughs> considering you got now an extra 10 this year to get angry at you. But he did a brilliant job last year. I thought every penalty was fair and, and deserved. And Brody Kostecki would disagree with one of those <laughs> when he said he could get in the bin, but pretty cool. We are hoping to see at some point this season as well some wild card drivers from the main game championship out here as well. Very exciting. Here's Josh Muggleton. He was part of this fight last year. And this is interesting because he's actually caught his ride from last year. His old team boss now, he's putting him under pressure. That's Jake Blackhall, who designs all the liveries, designed all the liveries for this series and the BP All-Stars E-Series that we had earlier in the year. They're alongside each other, but as I said, very difficult to overtake at. That was on the limit for Jake Blackhall of cutting the track. It's really the only section here where you can get penalized for track limits by the automated iRacing stewards. It's basically an automatic detection that will penalize you a certain amount of seconds. You have to slow down, but according to the way Jake Blackhall's speeding off and onto the back straight here. He looks like he's gone away unscathed, representing Pure Sims Esports. Yeah, and you know what's cool about uh, this as well is I think he's got the 2017 British Touring Car Champion as his spotter tonight. Ashley Sutton. Ashley Sutton. So that's not a bad guy to have in your corner. They are very good friends. They've been friends for, I think, now about five, six years or something. Hopefully we see Ash in supercars. I know there's been rumours throughout the years of him moving to Australia, maybe in 2021. Well, if nothing else, hopefully we can get him uh, maybe a ride in the E-Series as well. <laughs> Let's go on board and peek over the shoulder as we go ripping through this very fast part of the circuit. And a great chance now to listen in and crank it up for our sure sounds of the game. Sounds of the game. Thanks for the ride. That's Jackson Blackhall fending off his good buddy Josh Muggleton, who drove for him last year in the Knight Rider Designs entry. Oh, that's the pressure oh. from the Shaw Mustang. That is a striking car with the pink wheels as well. The local legends car of Josh Anderson. Whoa, battle on here. Seiko 5 car in the middle of it all is Cooper Webster, one of the youngest in the field. And this is fighting for what will be second in the motor race. Oh, no. Oh, that's tight. Jake Burton buying into this one. One of these drivers must have struck the wall. There's some damage to Jake Burton's left and, left and right doors here. Sorry, left side of the car. This is going to end in tears, surely, down here at turn one. 
Jordan Caruso, that's the Repco car having a crack at this. He was picked first in the draft. And Madison Down, the last driver in this very feisty little battle pack. Cool shot. Look how hungry that livery looks too, the Seiko 5 Racing oh. livery. And have a look at this at, down the back end of the order, the Repco Racing number 12 car this of Jordan awesome. Caruso. What Brilliant. Battle. This is a really, really good battle. And finally, it ends in tears now, as there's the big hit. Uh -oh. Webster sprayed and upside down goes Madison down. That is big. He's sliding and still tumbling down the road at Belle Isle. Finally gets it back on all fours, and that's lucky because it'll give him a chance to continue. Whoa. It well, was brewing. It was coming. Well, Brad Jones will be glad that's virtual because that is surely $100,000 <laughs> at a minimum of a damage bill. That car's done. I think Madison Down's going nowhere. Ethan Grigg Gold's our only retirement. And he would have had a ride in that one in virtual reality. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a close your eyes and hold on ride for Madison Down. Whoa, that was wild. So final pit stops, I reckon, for this race. Only Sam, Sam Blacklock in the field is yet to enter the lane. Everybody else on your totem on the left-hand side of the screen has entered the box. So this is Richard Hampstead up ahead in the Tickford Racing number six entry for Super Cheap Auto Racing. Job Stewart at the back, Brady Myers as well. Josh Rogers is your effective race leader. That was wild stuff, and thankfully, Richard Hampstead gets out and back into this fight with Ethan Grigal. And one thing, Chad, we should look out for, Dane Warren has undercut. What is that? Three cars since his first stop. He is effectively in second now. That was a brilliant strategy to come in early. Because of the fight. Exactly. So that massive battle pack, which eventually ended in tears with that big rollover for Madison Down, has cost all of those drivers time. And it's fallen perfectly into the hands of Dane Warren. That was crazy. So Blacklock, the only driver to not have stopped yet, would have a bit of clear racetrack early. We check in with James Golding in the Sid Chrome car to have uh, James Golding a part of this field for Team 18 Racing. So that's the driver that they have chosen and he is a very capable sim racer as well. Well, we need to see that one one more time and that is definitely going to be a Lenovo Savage moment with an exclamation point. So it started with the Seiko 5 Cooper Webster car getting knocked sideways. I love it. That's a street fight delivery. This turned into a proper street fight. Oh, that's wow. unlucky. So what's happened there is you, you saw the car blinking and disappearing. That's just a connection issue, I think, which is why Jordan Caruso has gone disappearing. And we ride on board. Is this with Caruso? You know, this is with Madison Down. Well, this is the view you want to see. So it's on the outside at turn four. There's the tap from the inside of Hank Philcell. And then whack. Whoa. That is such a street circuit accident as well. And then drive away as if nothing happened in about two <laughs> seconds. Grab a gear. Oh, nothing happened. Here we yeah. go. We should be fine to continue from there. That is your second Lenovo Savage moment of the night. This is a pretty savage looking car right now for local legends, Josh Anderson. So a number of the drivers in this field, particularly this guy that we're riding on board with, have real world racing experience. Got a little more look at a move up here. Is that one of the BP cars swinging through? And wow, Anderson nearly following them straight into the fence. That was Emily Jones on Jake Blackhall, and she's got that move made. Nice work, Emily. There is Josh. So he's actually leading the Aussie Racing Cars Championship at the moment. Unfortunately, just got the one round at Bathurst in at the 12 hour where he picked up a race win. Uh, and then, you know, 2020 happened, and they didn't get back out there. But that's pretty cool for a guy who's racing in this E-Series to have some really cool real-world experience as well. Yeah, there's been a lot of series like that this year. I know in the FIA World Rallycross, championship rx2 only had one round and they crowned the champion henry krogstad as we watch cooper webster somehow still i mean that yeah. car still looks decent for the amount of times it's whacked the wall <laughs> well that's the, the cool part about having that military style paint job on that car so ethan freakle hasn't made his way out of the pits that's him in the shannon's car now will that give him pole position for the reverse grid race is that what he's playing at here I would say so, and I would say he's probably looking good for the race win in that one, <laughs> but we'll see how he fares. Lap Wait. one, if he makes it through lap one, he certainly is. Sam Blacklock should rejoin the field, I think, outside the top 10. It worked for Lando Norris uh, at Austin, I think it was, when he pulled yeah. off the reverse grid race win. So this is, I mentioned Street Fighter earlier. This is a Street Fighter five promo that Seiko 5 have been running. They've got some really cool Street Fighter based watches that they've been selling can't make them quick enough to sell at the moment because everybody wants one. 
uh, to have been that popular. And so they decided that they needed some Seiko slash Street Fighter liveries for this week. And the fans have voted for that really cool uh, Guile spec. Very Air Force looking car for young Cooper Webster. Surprised he's still able to drive that thing, to be I honest reckon. with you. So that incident before with Caruso and Madison down, I think Caruso will receive dispensation for that because there really was nothing he could do. He probably couldn't even see Madison down for about one or two seconds. Check out Jackson Suzlin Harlow here. We're checking out his, well, his Cup Cadet car on the big screen, and then that's him actually wheeling away in the smaller screen. Look at him leaning into the corners. He's like a, he's like a virtual Mick Doohan out there. We didn't win all those trophies in the background. I think if we switched the light on, we'd be able to see a lot of them. Yeah. But he's won them for a reason. I guess sometimes drivers do that to just shift your weight in the cart sometimes. He's a two-time karting state champion, as well as an Australian Kart Championship and Race of Stars podium winner. So a lot of karting experience. Here's Jordan Caruso, snapped up by Repco, naming right sponsor with the first draft pick. And doing a nice job at the moment. He actually finished equal second in the draft to Richard Hampstead. Repco with their first pick, snapping up Jordan. No relation to Michael Caruso, if you're wondering. 20 years of age from Trelgan in Victoria. And here comes the youngest in the field, the triple nine, the Penrite racing car of Job Stewart makes that move. And the young Mount Gambier teenager steps through. That was a nice one. The youngest driver in the field and shares the same birthday as Josh Muggleton, the 30th of April, who's the oldest driver in the field. I love it. 33 and is the oldest in the field. He's the only driver in his 30s in the field as well. <laughs> He's still young, still going strong. He's been around in sim racing for many years, Josh Muggleton. Competed over in Europe in a competition called Nissan GT Academy. And would have won had his teammate not rolled the car. That's what we've heard in the storylines. <laughs> is there a scratch on this car? It is perfect. Look at it. He has not touched a thing out there. He's barely even got the thing it looks like out of second gear. He's got that Jamie Wink up look going on right now where it's just not a bit of sweat. It's no worries. He's calm. He's cool in the driver's seat. He's getting it done. And how well has this worked out for Walkinshaw and Dreddy United? They have a pool of four spotters that they're using across the course of the year to try and make sure that they strategize their way into it. And that worked out beautifully. We were hypothesizing that this guy was going to come in outside the top 10 at one point. <laughs> Still laughing at the, the ad board. That's fallen over. He's, so have a look at this through the middle sector. He's going to be so smooth on the pedals. These sim racers spend so much time, they rarely make mistakes. Third gear through here, carry some minimum speed. Surprised he used the curb there. And then late apex through here. You don't actually see the apex because there's a crest. And look at this next corner. You've got to turn in really early. He's not going to hit the wall, trust me. And there you go. Oh. Perfect by Dane Warren. Pretty cool to watch him go in action right now. The two VRS coming to SimSport drivers. That's their normal SimSport teams. And they are dominating right now. 1-2 for Walker and Shaw and Dreddy United. Forzan Al Nabi stayed out of trouble in the BP Ultimate car. Here he is right now. He's originally from New Zealand. He's very close to the screen. I know you do that. <laughs> so the reason you do that, we're having a laugh, but the reason you do that is you want your field of vision to be close, but that's really close. I've never seen that before. <laughs> it cannot be good for your eyes. <laughs> the eye drop economy yeah. will be fueled by Forza and Al Nabi after this event. Well, Scott McLaughlin used to run the, uh, the, the glasses to try and kill some of the glare. That works. I love it. So many different combinations as well that the drivers are using from home. Everyone's got a different setup. The rig, the wheel, the pedals, the wheelbase, the PC that you're using. How many screens do you have? Do you have one that's curved? Do you use virtual reality? Three screens, a fourth screen for data. Do you use spotters? Do you go it alone? There are so many different ways to do it. Well, oh, that was almost a hint of oversteer there, which is probably the worst thing that's happened to him in 14 laps. So Chad, the story for Josh Rogers, as you know, we spoke about it many times. He's moved to Germany, Yep. joined the what's called the Coanda Simsport Team House, which is the best run sim racing team in the world. Dane Warren actually signed with the team this year as well. And now he gets to focus on this full time. He driver coaches in his spare time and he's gone a long way. I remember when I first met him three, four, five years ago, sometimes we'd be up after a race for, for the Grand Prix series up until about 4 a.m. in the morning. He loves to chat, great fellow and loves to send pickles to people's houses after they win races, as he did to Jake Burton <laughs> yep. last year. That was a nice one. Uh, that was a pretty lean burger meal, that one. Into the last sector, slowest part of the track. He's through there in second gear. And he is picking up exactly where he left off. He just picks that bookmark up and goes straight back to the top. 
Walkinshaw Andretti United first and second for the first race of the year and he's starting to let the back end of this car slide out he's going to look very quick this year once again Josh Rogers put your hands up for Detroit he loves this city and he picks up the first win of the 2020 Repco Supercars Pro E-Series and he did it so easily Dane Warren second Walkinshaw Andretti won two Forza Al Nabi he was on the podium in the All-Stars E-Series and he's straight back to it and uh, I would be having it a guess that he's probably picked up Seiko 5 quickest lap as well. Unfortunately for Dane Warren, the situation's gone from bad to worse. Cool car collection in the background, though. He's got some shell-powered cars. He needs to remove those. <laughs> he's got all the enemy cars surrounding him at the moment. There's your third place man, Forza Al Nabi, getting a really good look at that screen for BP Ultimate. Here's your Repco results. Josh Rogers, six seconds in a 14-lap race. He just drove away from them. Dane Warren with a really good strategy. The early pit stop really paying off. Had to look after the tyres. Falls in El Nabi inside the top three. Richard Hampstead did a nice job. Sort of flew under the radar. Early pit stop for him. Definitely improved Richard Hampstead this year. He's come in better and even stronger than last year. Remember, he was on the podium in the first round and first race last year. Was second best driver coming out points-wise behind Madison Down, who took home overall round victory in 2019. So Ethan Grigot will be starting on the pole in our reverse grid race. Let's get into our Shaw live chat, our first one of the night. And uh, it's a very warm welcome to Josh Rogers all the way from Germany. Hey, mate, congratulations. You're back on top. Hey, guys. Yeah, cheers for having me. Um, what a race, eh? Uh, you know, I mean, I was very, very stressed coming into that one that I was going to stop at the start. I haven't done a start in one of these cars in quite a while, but uh, well, in a race situation, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, managed to get off the line nice and, uh, nice and cleanly. And from there on, it was just us forward. Tonight, you've already picked up $500 worth of cryptocurrency. You've picked up the Seiko 5 watch and 75 points. Can you do it from the back in the reverse grid race? Um, I mean, we'll see. I think, to be honest, the reverse grid race at a track like this as well, passing is quite challenging. You just probably saw that in this race. So um, strategy is going to be everything. Uh, timing that pit stop right. And, of course, getting through the first lap clean as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Uh, obviously, the uh, Mobile One Appliances Online Racing Commodore was hooked up for this one. And, uh, and we'll see if it's the same with the next one. Nicely done. All right, well done, mate. Congratulations on the first race win of the year. Good job. Cheers, guys. Cool to have him on the line all the way from Germany. Let's check out our Repco highlights. The first race of the 2020 Repco Supercars Pro E-Series. We've got the very best in the world at it, and the very best in the world, frankly, is Josh Rogers at the moment. Wasn't the cleanest start, so let's watch what happened to Sam Blacklock there. He just, I think his brake bias was wrong. Remember, it's a fixed setup, and you want to ship that more to the rear. He's got something wrong there. This was an... I don't think there was contact here between the Red Bull HRT car and Madison Down. Good pass here, though, by Jake Blackhall on Josh Muggleton. Got that done cleanly. Yeah, they had at it for a few laps. This was the big moment oh, of the go. race. Phil Cell into Webster. Hey. And then Caruso caught up in that one as upside down goes Madison Down. That was big. This is from Madison's point of view, and the Brett Jones racing car oh. takes the tumble. And he was wearing virtual reality goggles, so that would have been quite the fright. And that was a wild, wild ride. Timed the pit stop to perfection, and it was pretty much a lights to check his win in the background. <laughs> Dan Warren had his own moment, but this was just about perfect driving the Chaz Mostert car. Car 25, the Mobile One Appliances Online Walkinshaw Andretti United car picks up the first win and 75 points. Time for another short live chat. Jordan Caruso, pick number one in the draft. Uh, congratulations on winning your spot. How are you feeling with this big, big night and a big field of cars, Jordan? Yeah, no, this is heaps of fun. Um, yeah, it's uh, such a great opportunity to be here and I'm um, just trying to make the most of it. Uh, that first race is pretty hectic. 11th for you. What are you expecting yeah. from the reverse grid race? Um, it's just so hard to pass here. So it sort of all starts with qualifying. I didn't really qualify as well as I probably should have and then just um, was sort of stuck there for the rest of the race. But reverse grid should be fun. Um, yeah, it's difficult to pass. So potentially try to do something with the strategy. But um, yeah, just try to have a clean race and get past as many cars as I can. All right, best luck. It's going to be very, very busy. We'll let him uh, get his race face on. Uh, we're not too far away from getting into that reverse grid race. But before that, do you want to shore up your ride? Because sure are going to be handing out weekly prizes throughout the course of the E-Series. All you have to do is go and snap a photo of your simulator, upload it on Facebook in the comment section. Whoever gets the most likes wins. It's that simple. Plenty of prizes thanks to Shaw to be won. All right, a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Reverse grid, you don't want to miss it.
The Repco Supercars Pro E Series is proudly brought to you by Lenovo Legion. Game with speed. Hi, Steve, thanks. Good choice. That'd be $52.99, thanks. Thanks. Repco, it starts with the parts. From the outside, who would know what lies beneath? Unleash it with a machine as savage as you are. Lenovo Legion. Stylish outside, savage inside. Steve, thanks. Good choice. That'd be $52.99, thanks. Thanks. Repco, it starts with the parts. The Repco Supercars Pro E Series is proudly brought to you by Lenovo Legion. Game with speed. Uh, I'm from Sydney, New South Wales, and I'll be racing with Tickford Racing in the Supercars Pro E Series. I've been sim racing for around about 14 years now, uh, and my favourite track uh, in sim racing would be Bathurst. Uh, I don't think it really needs an explanation, but it really is the holy grail of motorsport uh, in Australia. Outside of that, I'd say also Suzuka is a track that I really enjoy uh, driving in, in the simulator. Uh, it's a really fantastic high-speed uh, flowing circuit, which I, I get a lot of enjoyment out of. Today I'm just going to take you on a quick tour of the equipment which I'll be using through the series, uh, which you can see behind me here. So for my cockpit, I use a Next Level Racing GT track. Uh, I've been using it for around about a year now and I found that it's actually a really good cockpit. Uh, it's really sturdy and adjustable and you're able to bolt a direct drive wheel into it as well. Alongside that I use triple screens. Um, triple screens do provide a pretty good amount of immersion I think. Obviously not quite as much as using VR. Uh, I did try using VR for a little while but I just found that it gave me a little bit of motion sickness so I, I reverted to the triple screens. I also wanted to talk you through the dash that I use, which is actually quite an important part of the cockpit. Uh, it provides me quite a lot of information when I'm driving. So as you can see there, it's got things like uh, brake bias, uh, the amount of fuel in the tank, uh, weather information, uh, but it also provides me calculators as well uh, for working out how much fuel to use per lap um, if I'm in a situation where I need to save fuel. So it's a really important uh, part of the setup which I use, uh, which I find gives me, I guess, a little bit of an advantage in, in those sort of situations. Uh, as you can also see here, uh, I run a iPad, uh, which is used as a track map. Uh, and it's a really good tool to use in races which require a bit of strategy, uh, because you're able to see when other cars are running, uh, where they are on track. Uh, and it also lets you, lets you know uh, where you'll come out on track after you've taken your pit stop. Uh, so it's a really good way of being able to strategize during a race uh, to make sure that you're coming out in clear air or that you're coming out into the track position that you're wanting to.
Thanks for the tour. Richard Hampstead, cool way to get to know some of our drivers. We'll be doing plenty more of uh, those get to know you's across the course of the six weeks. All right, back to Belle Isle, reverse grid. Uh, this was a lot of fun when we were doing it in the All Stars E Series. There was plenty of tears. So, how do the fast guys at the back, Jonathan, avoid those big crashes? I don't know if it's impossible or not. You have to pit early and get yourself out of traffic. That's the only key in this race, Chad. It's the same distance, 14 laps. Tyres aren't going to come in and they're not going to wear out as much as we expect either. I think we could see a new or a brand new career race winner here. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have Ethan Griggolt off the pole. Let's check out how they're going to be queuing up alongside him on our Seiko 5 race grid for the reverse grid. Race number two, always a fan favourite. You never know what's going to happen in these reverse grid races, especially around a tricky track like this one. Sam Blacklock lines up alongside him in the Shell V-Power racing car. Love that Pioneer DJ car of Brady Myers, last year's number one draft pick, and Madison Down alongside him. Jake Blackhall in the Pure Sims team. James Golding in a good starting spot here for Team 18. Josh Anderson, Aussie Racing Cars points leader alongside Emily Jones for BP Ultimate. Josh Muggleton, oldest guy in the field. We're going to keep ribbing him about that tonight. He's only 33. Ben Smith in the Castrol pink car tonight. Harley Haver for Matt Stone Racing in Kubota alongside Jordan Crusoe. Good to catch up with him a moment ago. Jared Philsell was in the thick of things in that last one. Job Stewart, youngest in the field. Just 16 years of age. Jackson Susland Harlow had a busy race that last time by. Andrew Gilliam started strong, fell back a couple of spots. He's starting alongside Jake Burton for Brad Jones Racing. There's Richard Hampstead. We just met him a moment ago. Alongside Forzan Al Nabi, who was third in the last race. And the Walkinshaw and Dreddy United drivers have it all to do off the back row. First and second in the championship, just like they were last year, albeit with different drivers. And there is Ethan Griggle ready to go with those triple screens. Ready to go. Remember, a good chance to donate right now. Head to pinkfundraiser.com.au. Choose your favourite driver and who you want to tip some money in. Our goal is $20,000 tonight. Help us get there. OK, let's go. Going to queue them up for about 13 laps of racing around Belle Isle. Barney says, drop the hammer. Oh, dropping the hammer big time as Emily Jones with an almighty burnout on the start line. Ethan Grinkle leads us into the first corner. Beautiful start from the Shannon's car. As we run down towards tricky turn three. Blacklock hugging that inside line on the defensive. This is where it all went wrong for him last race. Just about three wide on the outside is Brady Myers. Do they squeeze? Do they pinch for some spots? Myers locks the rears and they get away with it. But watch the background. It's pretty clean to start with. Nice work through that first sector. Good spot about Emily Jones. These drivers do oh. use a lot. There was an accident in the back of the pack. We'll try yeah. and distinguish. Cooper Webster was one of them. I think he got away with it. Missed who the other driver was that headbutted that tyre wall. These drivers do use a line locker in this car as one of the drivers whacks the barrier there. I think that was... Uh, that. Now, who is that as well? The sponsor's actually wiped out of the car already <laughs> this early in the event. Driver X will go with his turn seven. <laughs> and this is a big move from Harley Haber grabbing the curb oh. and bang, this is going to be stacks on. It's a tricky part to cause a big pileup. Do the leaders get through? Josh Rogers, how did he avoid that one? That's Jake Blackhall in the wall. So that's the driver. We couldn't spot who it was initially, but Blackhall had nowhere to go. We're oh. still trying to distinguish. Oh, Andrew Gilliam's in there as well as Josh Muggleton. So multiple drivers caught up. Could have been worse. And how on earth did the Walkinshaw cars get through that one? Josh Rogers is 11th from 22nd on a street circuit. Now that will change his strategy because I'm almost certain he would have pitted at the end of the first lap. Dane does. Warren comes in, exactly, which is a good strategy. He was down at the back of the pack. But for Ethan Grigolt, he has won in this series. He did once, uh, did win once last year at Alton Park. Yep. And that was a reverse grid race too. So this could be a second career win for him. Sam Blacklock's a rookie, but Madison Down has picked up a couple of these race victories too. So it's the inexperience versus the experience as we watch Cooper Webster here who's been in every single barrier this race <laughs> and keeps it clean coming out of three. Oh, that was tight. There he is. Psycho 5, Psycho 5 entry, which is really cool to see. He's flashing the headlights as well. Full attack right now in the back of the Cup Cadet car. I love that. How cool is that Seiko livery with the Street Fighter 5 on the side? It's a mean machine. It's a bit of a mean machine. Fan voted. Looks like, a, looks like a soap derby racer. Soapbox derby racer. It does have a bit of that look about it. Downhill trolley spec. Oh, it's oh, one in the oh. fence. It's James Golding. And you're so vulnerable to hit the barrier there because it's a section of the racetrack where you're trail breaking. <laughs> doesn't look impressed about it either. <laughs> doesn't look overly impressed with that one. He was on the grid last week or 
week before it. The Bathurst 1000, driving for Team 18, sharing with Mark Winterbottom. Accidentally started that race in second gear, which wasn't the best way to do it, but surely made up for it in an almighty middle stint. Did he have a tech issue? I can't remember what he explained, but I don't know if that was him or somebody else had an issue where they had to start the race in second. I know that. But I think he said maybe it was something to do with the car not being, not allowing him to see which gear he was, was in. Yeah, he had a dash issue. So yeah. he pulled up, he grabbed first gear and showed neutral. So he grabbed another gear, which he thought was first. Turned it was second. second. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he was last on lap one, but oh. made up for it with a ripper drive. Let me tell you something. Emily Jones certainly grabbed gear zero or something because she had so much wheel spin off the line. Like I spoke about before, as we ride on board here with the Red Bull Holden Racing Team driver of Jared Philsell, whose birthday Ooh. is today. This is a nice scrap above ahead of him. This is between, oh, that's Harley Haber up the inside of Jordan Caruso, and they're still alongside each other. Great scrap. Phil Sell's got to position his car perfectly here because he could pick off two drivers. Haber stuck on the outside for now, but turn seven might just give him a chance to fight back. Phil Sell wants both of them. Which horse does he back? Tries to follow Caruso, who lifts the right sides and feeds Haber to the fence. There's been a bit of that going on. Going to keep Craig Dontis busy, so Phil Sell got one of them. And Job Stewart in that fight now as well in the Erebus Headright racing car. Oh, and that's him sideways. Oh, that's it's so difficult to get the power down coming out of that corner. It's so slippery. The rear end here just keeps trying to adjust itself, and you're trying to get it to do something differently. And here's... Go on. So, pretty crazy start of the race, and... Our Lenovo Savage moment has to be this one. Haber off the fence, man, almost off the turnbuckle considering what the result was. Multiple cars involved, three or four cars to start with. And that was an almighty crash to start off the reverse grid race. Get Just a better that inside curve. Let's see what happened behind though. This is let's see the Walkinshaw car. So there's Rogers. The C's parting for him. Oh. <laughs> Muggleton, Muggleton had his own moment, completely separate to any of that. That was awesome. He's actually out of the race, Josh Muggleton, so I don't know if it was that spin there, because we didn't catch the end of it, but it was something that's caused him to, uh, to box that car. Okay, Jordan Caruso for Repco. Under heavy fire from the Triple Eight car, Jared Philzell. He's made that move across. This is very interesting because Josh Rogers is in 12th position, our race one winner, is the leading car who has made a pit stop. And so the Delta, like we said, is 23 and a half seconds roughly for a trip in pit lane and a pit stop. And the gap between, I, would, I think it's Rogers and leader Grigold, it's about 34 seconds. So he certainly doesn't have that covered, but Rogers looks to be in for a top 10 spot here, which I think he'll be proud of knowing that this is the most difficult circuit to overtake out of the season. We were talking about the history of this circuit, hosted IndyCar since the early 90s. Uh, Roger Penske, the man himself, as Phil Cell dives into the pits, promotes that IndyCar event. Formula One used to run across on the other side of the river. But how about this one? Our very own Neil Crompton used to race here as well. Back really? in 1997, yeah, in touring cars, driving for Steve Horn, which is really cool. Picked up a couple of podiums, but got disqualified uh -oh. that weekend. Why? And it cost him the title. Had an awkward tangle with uh, David Donahue, son of Mark, yeah. uh, and Pete Cunningham, who was the factory Honda driver at the time. I think there might have been a bit of politics in that one. Uh, disqualified? And, yeah, the only time in his career he ever got disqualified. That's rigged. And yeah, I reckon he probably agrees with you. It cost him what would have been a really cool title to win. And seeing how well he took the action that was well, going down in the celebrity race, I don't reckon he would have handled that one too well either. Well, I, I remember when Michael Schumacher got disqualified for uh, turning into, what was it, Chuck Jordan. Miller? Herrera. So you, so Same what? year as well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was the thing at the time, disqualifying drivers. Oh, unless you did it deliberately, I can't see why you'd get disqualified. But anyway, I'm out of context. Yeah. Here we ride on he board. He is watching me. tonight. Big shout out to Crumpo. <laughs> you can tell from the gloves that this is Josh Rogers. If I'm wrong, let me know, because those purple and orange gloves are his sim racing team's gloves. He's right behind Jared Philsell. So Philsell's come out of the lane and is ahead of Josh Rogers. These two teammates last year, they got along very well, but they couldn't actually share data, Chad, because it was a conflict of interest, considering that outside of the E-Series, they competed on different teams. Yes, yeah, so just to explain that, they do have, obviously, their teams for this series, but there are so many different online racing series, particularly across iRacing. Uh, there's what's called the V8 Scops, which is probably the premier Supercars Championship away from the official E-Series, where a number of these drivers have been cherry-picked. 
And for this year, we've probably got the most of those drivers from all those other series competing in this one. So it's become a little bit of an all-star series of sorts. But on top of that, there's the World Championships that you can race in, which we've had a few drivers. Super Cup, Porsche Super Cup. Oh, whacked the barrier too, as you said that. Sorry, Chad. Just gave that a little bit of a glance, and that's put the first scratch on the 25 of the night. Might have to count those this season. Yeah. We'll be able to keep count. But you, you met, you're right, Chad. All those international competitions, tens of thousands of dollars on offer. E NASCAR is probably the biggest one. Yep. There's been some other ones. E NASCAR is probably the the most consistent biggest one. There have been big competitions such as there used to be one called the Visa Vegas E-Race, which paid 200 grand to the winner. That went to Bono Haas, a Dutchman. And there's plenty of money up for grabs in this E-Series as well. $26,500 worth of prizes up for grabs. 10,000 to the winner. Uh, Josh Rogers obviously taking that money last year, which he added to the 50K that he won for winning Porsche Super Cup. And that is cold hard cash right there. First five places in the championship all get paid cold hard cash, as you say. I think Ryan Walkinshaw was happy last year. He got the big bucks. Yeah. Top two. Plus, he's an esports lover, is Ryan Walkinshaw. But credit to him because he did his research and got the best two last year. And this year, done their research again and got the best two this year. Yeah, they've locked them down early. Josh Rogers is hot property in the world of esports. He's just pouring the pressure on. Now, at what point does he pit here? Because he's losing time. So to be entering his mind, pit lane entrance is on the right-hand side around the corner here. Will the 25 duck in and try and get the undercut? Or does it go one more time around? It's going to stay there for now. So Ethan Grigold's in the lane. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Ethan Grigold has entered the pit lane already for his BP Ultimate pit stop. And is now effective race leader, I would say. Yep. The gap to Madison Down is awfully close. So Madison Down and Job Stewart are the only two in the field who have yet to enter yes. the lane for their one compulsory pit yeah. stop. So apologies, yeah, the 25 has pitted as he now makes that move down on the 38 of Jared Phil's cell. They give each other plenty of room. Can't make it happen. The teammates from last year squaring off, first and second in the championship. Jordan Caruso is about to feel the wrath of these two because they are approaching in a hurry. And he just locked the left side there in the Repco Mustang. They're filling his mirrors halfway home in the reverse grid race. And as I said earlier, happy birthday to Jared Philsell, who received a Red Bull fridge from his team today. That's cool. Stocked it up with Red Bull cans. Plenty of energy tonight. Too much energy through that corner. You know, yep. there's a cricket pitch there, Chad. We didn't speak <laughs> about it. The only cricket pitch, I think, in the United States of America. Oh, and is oh. that... Who's that into the barrier? Someone was pulled up with the entire bonnet off that car. I, I got afraid there. I thought it was the Shannon's car, but he's yeah. still running on our timing screens. A few more laps and that thing's going to be up on bricks. Oh, that's Muggo. Yeah, Josh Muggleton. I wouldn't be parking that car outside a shopping centre anytime soon. <laughs> he's, that's awesome. You could pawn this car for parts. <laughs> he's just about. He's left a few of them around Belle Isle at the moment. Yeah, I think oh, it's in Struggle Town, isn't it? The, Poor the, Josh Muggleton. He had all the bad luck last year. The issue for him is that the next race isn't reverse grid. It's based on accumulated points. Yeah. So from it's the first be a tough one for him from here. Yeah, from the first two races. I love the pink rims though. Would you ever dye your hair that colour? I've seen a few people do that during lockdown. Uh, raise enough money for breast cancer, I'd probably consider it. Oh, well, you, <laughs> I love how you spun that so politically that you made it sound good. It's always a good way to do anything. That's why we've got so many of these pink liveries tonight. Give another plug right now. If you're enjoying the action, remember, Pink Fund Racer. We're trying to get to $20,000 tonight. And this guy's teammate, Emily Jones, is leading that fight at the moment. Every single team, this is why it's a race, every single team is raising money. Whoever has the most money raised wins, obviously. And at the moment, Emily Jones is cleaning up. She's already raised over three grand by herself. Pinkfundraiser.com.au. That's why we're in pink in the studio. And so many of the cars have got a little dash of pink on them. And the pink wheels as well, like Harley Haber. Pink on the bonnet for Forza and El Nabi. Um, I hit with some pretty damning figures here. It was 20,000 Australians a year are diagnosed with breast cancer alone. It's the most diagnosed, sadly, the most diagnosed form of cancer. That's 55 a day. So you're going to be saving some lives if you can help us raise some money tonight for breast cancer trials. It's part of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is October. So we've got, we're at the home of Ford, Detroit, Michigan. We've got 10 Mustangs in the field, 12 Commodores. All represented evenly. Parity is not a question in this series. Everyone's running fixed setups. The cars are the same. 
So there's no excuses on that front. It's getting pretty close between Ethan Griggle and Sam Blacklock. He's got a little bit of a gap there at the moment, which he's been able to hang on to as we check out the Pioneer DJ car. This is what's so cool about the E-Series. You get some really different sponsors and different ideas. Cool. Like, like, who would ever do a fan survey and, and pick the livery of your favourite Street Fighter car? Like, I just love how cool that is. There, there's a Street Fighter car right on cue. It's been a bit of a street fight today. So many cool different ways of doing it, different ways of broadcasting. So you get to watch us on Fox Sports or KO, but also on Twitch, which has been huge so far this year. And this is Dean Warren we ride on board with. Just driving... What Bryce Fullwood drove this season, the Mobile One Midis Online, oh, sorry, Mobile One Midis en Racing Entry. I'm getting mixed up with the Appliances Online <laughs> Racing Entry. We've all fallen into that hole at some point. And why don't they do that in the real world? Look at the squabble ahead, oh, by the way. Yeah, a bit on there. Oh, is that between Rogers and Phil Sell? It yeah. is. The two big guns. Yeah, Rogers and Phil Sell were squaring off through the slow stuff. Phil Sell still got him at bay. Here it is, right on cue. Well picked, Jonathan. Now, the difficulty here is turn one's not an overtaking opportunity. Phil Sal is awesome through one and two. Oh. <laughs> Don't know why he's going defensive. He just doesn't need to through here, and it's going to leave him vulnerable on the exit. Look at the bump as well. That's going to unsettle the rear end. There's a bit of dirty air for Rogers to deal with. This should be an overtake around the outside if he can make it stick. Goes for the switchback, and Whoa. there's no room. Oh, somehow the two of them stay alive. That was on the absolute ragged edge. They were knocking and bumping and grinding and pinching each other down into that braking zone in turn three. And somehow they got away with it. Tried the almighty Dan Ricardo surprise move to the inside. Look one way and sell the other. Sold a little bit of candy, but didn't get the spot. And as a result, Cooper Webster's catching him. And I've done that move for years, but in open wheelers. <laughs> to do it in this thing is insane. Let's have a look at the replay. Here's your Repco race replay. Now, that was a pretty defensive line by that point at Phil Cell. The birthday boy was not going to leave oh. any room. Try to just force the gap. Baby. He's getting aggressive. And so this next corner coming up, so this is a long radius left-hander. This is where they were side-by-side -side a lap earlier. I'd love to see if Phil Cell goes defensive. Because Rogers had a peak. Oh. And they've actually made a bit of contact. And it's a bit forceful there from Rogers. There may have been a small connection issue for the fact that he's racing in Germany. That's cost Jared Philsell not two, but three oh. positions potentially. And he's getting the tag team at the moment from Walkinshaw and Dreddy United. He got one on his way through for Dane Warren as well. The rears will be cooking on that car. It'll be sliding, it'll be ugly, it'll be all over the place. Cup Cadet is getting involved with Brad Jones Racing now. Is Jackson Suzlin Harlow, former karting star, and Harley Haber, who has a lot of real world experience all the way up to Super 3. So let's check out exactly how this played out. He just ran out of chances, didn't he? So again, hard to see if there's contact, but with the ping issues that you get, remember we had one with, uh, was it Max Verstappen Last in year. Barcelona? Oh, this year, sorry, yeah, at Barcelona. That Very was with similar. Scott McLaughlin. Yeah. Oh, and then side by side. Now that was contact. It was Anton Di Pasquale, I think, down at turn one. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, I've got that one wrong. So, so yeah. the famous Max moment happened. See, again, that's, I think his ping to the server is about 300, 400. Yeah, right. And how do you judge that if you're Craig Donders? Do you have to know everyone's ping settings before you can ping someone? I think it's in the rules. I think Donters will see that it wasn't forceful on, on purpose. I think Rogers did a good job getting the car stopped in time. But I don't, in my opinion, there are some rule books. And I know some people who say, hey, you should race and account for the fact that you have a large ping. So... <laughs> That, that it's up. I mean, I'm just glad I'm not in Craig Dantas's role right now, but I think I would leave that be just because of the fact that I don't think any driver did anything wrong. Teammates from last year, gloves are off this year. I love it. Jordan Caruso sitting sixth at the moment, 11th and sixth. Not bad race results for him. Brady Myers moving through there, I think, which is uh, what's happened between these two. Ethan Grigal has a solid six-tenth of a second lead over Madison Down for Brad Jones Racing. Looking at the bottom right-hand side, Joey Logano lookalike, Jordan Caruso. Did he sign his name or is that printed? Either way, I think it's pretty cool. Probably just copied Michael Caruso's signature <laughs> and just changed the first name. Very quick, Jordan Caruso, very fast. 
Go for a move. Go for it. Come on. Oh. You've got to be inside. Can he get close enough? It's Brady Myers. Last lap, he was three tenths of a second quicker. <laughs> so he's got the speed. Look at Josh Anderson ahead, hounding the DJR team Penske. Yes, Shell V Power Racing Team, Sam Blacklock. Blacklock, though, remember, he was in with a chance to win this. Started oh. second. Whoa! Oh, no. Got the rear sliding, and he did well to catch it. So he's lost three spots in the one corner. Here comes Josh Rogers. Just when you think life couldn't get any worse, Josh Rogers joins the fun. Rogers from 22nd to 7th, and he's not done yet. Remember last year at Alton Park, he scored a podium off a reverse grid race. I think that was the best we saw out of anyone. Oh, here we go. There's a bit on here between Phil Cell and Suzlin Harlow. That was close in the Repco replay. I think they just managed to sort that one out in time. Trying to follow them through the pack is El Nabi. This is the moment between Josh Anderson and the local Legends car. That's going to be switching over to become the Coke car at some point this year as well. Oh, have a look at this. Oh, fight for the lead. Fight for the lead between Ethan Grigg Galt and Madison down. And this will be an almighty move around the outside if he makes it stick. He does. Brad Jones racing to the lead. He's on fresher rubber too, is Madison down. This is Ethan Grigold's last opportunity into seven. Otherwise, Madison down is going to have this race won because Ethan Grigold's got no chance on his rubber. He's gone from his lead to the top. It's worked out beautifully for Madison down. Only driver in the field running Oculus Rift. Only driver in the field with any form of virtual reality. The RNJ Batteries car is looking the goods. That was a nice move. And he was the dominant man in round one of last year's E-Series, which was the live event. We held that series live uh, at Gfinity, which was at the live studio audience in all 12 cars racing on the same equipment. And because we had all of that equipment together, uh, it really changed who was comfortable in their sim. The guy who was probably quickest onto that was Madison Down, which is why he picked up two race wins last time out. He's about to maybe pick up another race win tonight. Last lap of the race, just snuck it in before time certain. Madison Down, Ethan Grigault and Josh Anderson, the top three. Brady Myers and Jordan Caruso wrap up the top five and Sam Blacklock is under heavy fire here from Josh Rogers. Does he go for the switch back? No, he goes all the way over to the right hand side. Jordan Caruso, that is, actually. No, these guys in the background. Oh, there they are. That's didn't what see I was that. talking about. Goodness gracious. This I'm is on. Up. And he's made it stick around the outside. That is an almighty move. Blacklock has one more crack at him. Can't make it stick. So Rogers into six. Now, remember, I talked about the Alton Park race. The Phillip Island race, he actually started last, ended up second. That's been the best reverse grid performance so far. Yeah, but that was with 12 cars on the grid. Exactly. This is even better. So great stuff by Josh Rogers. Madison down on the final lap. This will be his first win since that same race at Phillip Island, the second last race of 2019. Ethan Grigg Galt, I still think we'll be pleased with that anyway. I think starting from reverse grid pole, you couldn't expect less than a podium for him. Madison Down had an opportunity the uh, opportunity to attend Bathurst this year with Brad Jones Racing. And what's really interesting, I've noticed uh, that they are using Brad Jones Racing engineers as their spotters, which is really cool. So checkered flag is going to fly here for Madison Down. Reverse grid race winner for RNJ Batteries and Brad Jones Racing, 75 points. Nicely done for the man from Camden South. And he virtually won that one. Well done to Brad Jones Racing back on top. I know how much Brad Jones and the team love winning their first win since last year in the Dunlop entry of Jake Burton. There's Ethan Griggault. He drove for Gary Rogers Motorsport last year, graduating via a bit of funny stuff going on in the background, graduating via the draft. Josh Anderson, third place for the local legends. And Team Sydney, nice job. Getting himself a podium. And the famous fountain on Bell Island, wrapping up two big races at this really cool track in Michigan. And it's Madison down on your Repco results by nine tenths of a second and had to earn that one. That was a really good drive. The big mover, Josh Rogers from 22nd to 6th. He picked up 11 on lap one. Dane Warren goes from the back row all the way up to 8th. Jared Philsell had the hands up against the ropes there trying to hang on. Forzan El Nabi started third last and made it to 13th. So that's a pretty good effort. And Emily Jones rounding out the top 15. A number of drivers losing a lap because there was so much damage. And that was a pretty wild one. Muggleton, he just managed to get that car home. And Jake Blackhall also involved in one of those earlier crashes.
Wow, that was crazy stuff. Madison, congratulations, buddy. You are a race winner once <laughs> again. Didn't have to wait too long for that one. Yeah, thanks, Chad. Uh, crazy race. Um, not a great start to the night, but to uh, get up in that one was a good recovery. So over the moon with that um, to turn the night around. What was the decision, Madison, for the long strategy? You decided to pit much later than the rest of the field. Uh, yeah, the first race we went early and it really didn't pan out. So the objective was really just to gain clear track. And um, in the end, we knew we had good car speed. So uh, yeah, stayed out, used that clear track and yeah, it all paid off. Uh, Silverstone next for you. You were third there from memory last year. What's the plan for this one after the grid will be jumbled up a little bit with the points? Uh, more of the same. <laughs> Another win would be nice. Um, I'd probably take a third, but uh, hopefully we're starting up the front. Uh, Silverstone tends to be a strong track for me, so hopefully we can use that car speed there, use that clean air again and uh, be up there on the podium. All right, looks like you've got plenty of tax work to do in the background there on your bookshelf, <laughs> mate. So we'll, we'll let you office. get back to maybe, yeah, exactly, maybe clear up a couple of receipts before you launch into the next race at Silverstone. Good job, mate. Thanks, Chad. All right, let's check out your Repco highlights from the reverse grid race. Always exciting reverse grid. Barney waved the green and off they went. Ethan Grigould in the front row. Emily Jones had her own Summonats virtual session down there on the grid. It was the perfect start for the Shannon's insurance car. And ironically, it was the driver who drove for Shannon's insurance last year who ended up winning the race. Brady Myers had a big slide down on the opening lap. And at this stage, it was relatively clean until this one. The big one. This the is our one. equivalent to the big one. That was a massive one. And we get another angle of it here. So the Walk and Shaw cars made it through, which is critical for the championship. And so do a few others as well. I saw one of the BP cars make it through unscathed. And there's Muggleton. That was the end of it. And there were still other oh. cars. So there was a lot of squabbling. This continued for a good whole half a minute, that accident. I don't know if it was the big one or the long one, but that <laughs> one just went on and on and on. This is a controversial moment. Jared Philsell into it with Josh Rogers, who started off the back of the grid and somehow made his way from 22nd to 6th. Dane Warren sending his old ride for a bit of a move. Then the move for the lead. RNJ Batteries and Brad Jones racing. How about that one on the outside? Fresher Dunlop rubber, but got the job done anyway on the Shannon's insurance car of Ethan Greek Gould to go on and pick up that race win. So nicely done to the crew at Brad Jones Racing. Well done on picking up the first race win for Madison Down of the year. So like we said, Silverstone is coming up. That's not too far away, but on the way out, I want to tell you about the BP Race to Win promo. This is a really cool competition. It's going to give one lucky fan the chance to drive for their BP Ultimate E-Series team for the entire 2021 campaign, plus grab a $500 BP gift card. So fans are encouraged to go to Mount Panorama, set your fastest lap, and the winning fan will get to represent BP Ultimate in the E-Series for the entire 2021 campaign. Very exciting. Silverstone's up next, stick around. The Repco Supercars Pro E Series is proudly brought to you by Coin. Be part of where the world is going. Oh, sneeze, thanks. Good choice. That'd be fifty-two ninety-nine, thanks. Thanks. Repco, it starts with the parts. Who would know what lies beneath? Unleash it with a machine as savage as you are. This is how legends are made. Lenovo Legion. 
Stylish outside, savage inside. Hi, Steve, thanks. Good choice. That'd be $52.99, thanks. Thanks. Repco, it starts with the parts. The Repco Supercars Pro E Series, proudly brought to you by Coin. Be part of where the world is going. What a cool place to race this is. Silverstone back on the E-Series calendar. You're watching the Repco Supercars Pro E-Series. We've got the very best in touring car sim racing conditions heading out to race six nights of action. And the third and final race for the opening night is one of the most famous tracks in the world. And this is why we love this form of racing because we can put our supercars in a dream world and go to the coolest places. Let's check out our Repco race facts for a very, very special circuit. This is Silverstone, the track that hosted the very first Formula One race back in 1950. And 70 years later, here we are racing on it virtually. It's a lovely layout. It's one of my favorite circuits in, world, in the world right now. 79 litres of fuel required for the race. The drivers begin the race with 65, so they will need to take 14 in their pit stop. That won't take longer than it takes to take your four tyres in your one compulsory pit stop needed. The undercut works wonders here, so look out for that. About Worth about 1.2 seconds, I would say, roughly. And don't forget, too, this is the longest race of the evening, 150 points on offer for our race winner at Silverstone. Yeah, so that's really, really important. Uh, no surprise, it was Josh Rogers who won here last year in the 2019 E-Series. Cam Waters picked up a race win in Anton Di Pasquale. But how cool was it having Max Verstappen race here in Silverstone in the All-Star E-Series that happened uh, a few months ago? That was such a special invitation to have him here. I remember that awesome movie pulled lap one going through Maggots and Beckets to grab some of our best drivers in the championship. Yeah, it was awesome. It was actually a move to be remembered, really. It was um, something where... He actually spends about three to four hours a day, Chad, on the sim. So he's one of the best in the world, not only in the real world, but in the sim. I can't wait to see what his career is going to be like when it's all over. Yeah, remember, we are going to have some of the real supercars drivers joining the grid as wild cards as well. So really cool to be able to invite those. Who do you reckon will be the quickest? Wherever you're watching, hit us up in the comments section. Okay, race three. And here is your Seiko 5 grid. And no surprises who's on that front row. Josh Rogers has been surely the top performer of the night, thanks to Lenovo. will be marking his name down. Behind them, Richard Hampstead for Tickford. And Fawz and El Nabi going along nicely tonight. Andrew Gilliam, he's had a busy night in the boost car. He'll be starting alongside Jake Burton for Brad Jones Racing. Ditto that, Jackson, Susan Harlow starting alongside Jared Philsell. He's had a tricky night so far. We'll be hoping to be higher than that. Joe Stewart, 16 years of age, alongside Jordan Caruso. There it is, the Seiko 5 Shark lining up in 11th alongside Harley Haber. It's been a tough old night for Josh Muggleton. He's starting out of the Baker's Dozen alongside Emily, uh, Emily Jones. James Golding, cool, really cool to have him alongside Benjamin Smith in that striking Castro car. Josh Anderson and Brady Myers on the ninth row. Row 10, Jake Blackhall hasn't had his best night so far. Ethan Grigault has had a tricky one and uh, he's starting a long way back considering he was second in that last race. Madison down despite his race win. Also a long way back in this one. So the drivers who struggled in that first race are going to have a lot of work to do. I remember wearing pink tonight. We're raising some money throughout the course of the night uh, for breast cancer trials. So really cool to try and uh, raise as much money as we can there. Uh, okay, I think we've got Emily Jones ready for a little bit of a chat before we launch into this one. Good evening, Emily. Welcome back to the E-Series. Are you enjoying the night so far? Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, my God. It's been a nightmare so far. I... Uh... I have to talk about what just happened. I've done the most embarrassing thing I think I've ever done in iRacing. I was distracted and looking out the window and I forgot to put it in first gear. And then they said green oh. flag and I'm like, oh no. Anyway, everything's so you fine. So the clutch. But, we're, yeah, we're wondering, we gave you both perfect 10s for the burnout. The burnout was all time. We loved it. It was, I, I'm so embarrassed, but um, yeah, it's, it's not been going well. I kind of messed up qualifying a bit. I, I feel like I have some more pace, so yeah. Um, it's not all bad, but we'll see how we go. Is Silverstone going to be a yay or a nay for you tonight? What do you reckon? Um, I hope so. I had some okay speed there in the, the test race on the weekend that we did. 
Um, I think I'll be faster than than Belial, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. How cool to have the BP Ultimate colours on your car, plus a bit of pink on there as well, raising uh, awareness for breast cancer and hopefully some funds as well. And you are winning so far the, the fundraiser, the pink fundraiser. You're over three grand at the moment. Well done. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it's for a good cause. I My family has been affected by it. So, um, yeah, happy to raise some money. I think, yeah, it's over three grand at the moment. So, wow. Um, yeah, really happy. Uh, well done. Congratulations on winning that race so far. Uh, hopefully you can get out there and win the next race, which is Silverstone. Best of luck to Emily. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right. So this is going to be a, a really tricky one strategy-wise as well. Can anyone catch those two Walkinshaw and Dreddy United cars? They look incredibly quick at the moment. And there's a reason why we talk so highly about Josh Rogers. There's a very real chance that he could be the best in the world at the moment. Certainly is. He managed to finish second in the Porsche eSports Supercar. So that's a basically Porsche Cup cars in, in an eSports Supercar, basically, as it's called. Uh, he was involved in a lot of incidents, Chad, and that's why he ended up falling down to second. He did win that championship in 2018, was tens of thousands of dollars richer. The key to this race, though, is if you're within about half a second to a second behind the driver in front, that undercut... To, compared to the driver in front on old tyres, is worth up to about 1.2 seconds. Wow. So it's much different to Belle Isle where the undercut didn't work. Totally different strategy in this race. All right, we've got time for another chat here. Let's uh, queue up Sam Blacklock, who's driving the famous Car 17. And what a cool experience this is. Sam, congratulations on landing one of the coolest rides. You have the 17. You're driving the Shell V-Power racing car. Are you just thrilled to be a part of this? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an amazing experience and uh, a real honour, I guess, to represent not only Dick Johnson Racing, but, uh, you know, the car 17 and the number 17. Uh, it's just a real honour, yeah. Can you give us the very quick version of how you got the job? Because it's a really good story about how you just go and get something you want. Yeah, so uh, I didn't have a drive lined up for the E-Series and uh, I thought, you know... It's a long shot, but uh, and I had a few people pushing me, you know, just send out emails to all the teams. And, uh, you know, the team I would have loved to have gone with was, was Shell. And, uh, yeah, just sent them a lucky email, and there we go. Brilliant. Well done, mate. Good on you. You're a team member as well of that crew. So go and get it. The race is about to start, mate. So eyes forward, and best of luck for Silverstone. Thank you very much. All right, there is a live look at everyone's setup. How cool are those setups as well? Remember, some of these can cost anywhere up to $20,000 worth of equipment when you include the sim gear, the PC, the seat, the rig, everything. And we are on the grid at Silverstone. The Repco Supercars Pro E-Series, the Walkinshaw and Dreddy United pair are lining up on that front row. The famous starting grid, home of the Formula One Grand Prix the British GP and also the anniversary race that we had here this year as well. Lights are on. Waiting for a couple more cars to join the fun. Josh Anderson on that third row. Should be Jordan Caruso on the Repco car. Bidding, there he is. Love the way you get him out there. Who needs a warm-up <laughs> lap? Let's do this. Looks like we're just about set and ready. Waiting for the revs to rise. Josh Rogers and Dane Warren on that front row for Walkinshaw Andretti United. It's a nervous wait to get this one started. Got to remember to engage first gear, Emily Jones. <laughs> yeah, no looking out the window. Get the line locker ready. The car will tend to slip sometimes too. It's very difficult to get this car with the fixed setup going off the line. Okay, revs are up. The virtual revs bringing the virtual excitement back to the E-Series and the pros are ready to go. The very best in the world drop the clutch and we are racing at Silverstone. And that's a good start once again. For Josh Rogers, there's plenty of room on the outside to let that car move into. I think there may have been some rejigging of the grid late there because Ethan Grigul uh, yeah. is a little bit further up. So that makes sense after the uh, pretty good race result he had earlier. And they're three and four wide as they work their way up between Village. Oh, this oh. is always an accident-prone portion of the circuit. You can easily lose the rear end to Raintree. We saw Kimi Raikkonen do it in 2014. Keep this first lap clean, fellas, and they do. Great overtaking spot into here as well, into Brooklyn's. Down the Wellington Strait, big braking zone down here. This is a tough part of the track to pedal a supercar. They don't like these big, long radius corners. There's Job Stewart going the long way around in the Penrite racing car. It's a sea of pink down there at Luffield. 
This is awesome. Imagine if we bought supercars here. This would be incredible. They're still alongside each other. They haven't formed up yet. This style of racing, I'll be surprised if they don't form up, if they form up before the end of the lap. We're getting towards Cops and then towards Maggots Beckards. And this is a battle for the lead here between Warren and Rogers. It's not an overtaking opportunity, but maybe he does a Max Verstappen. Can he find a way through at Maggots and Beckett's? Can he get a good exit onto Chapel and out into the hangar straight, which will be his best chance? The slipstream effect is big in iRacing, but so is the aero wash. And he has a pretty good exit. Fourth gear, grabs fifth. He's got the run. Now, does his teammate go defensive up here or is the door open at Stowe? Not close enough. 17 laps is a long way for an early pit stop. So no one diving in just yet. Remember last year, Josh Muggleton used to always be the first to dive in. And this year, let's see if he does the same. There's the pit entry in the back of shot. No one I can see visually as of yet. Dane Warren's got to make this move early. And if he doesn't, has got to stay within half a second as we end the first lap. But have a look at this. Madison down ahead of Fors and Al Nabi. They've got some relatively quick competitors here. They need to keep these Walkinshaw cars honest. Otherwise, they'll run away with this race. Further back, plenty going on behind Phil Cell, who's got Grip Gault to the inside. There's Blacklock, who we're just chatting to, oh. putting the pressure on the Pioneer DJ car. And Brady Myers runs it wide. Oh, they're still into each other. There was a bit of confusion as to where they were virtually on the road. And the Shell V-Power Mustang gets shoved wide. Myers probably copped the worst of it. He's still on the grass, and he falls all the way to the back of the pack. Frustration for Brady Myers. He was so keen to make amends for the year that he had last year. He was really unhappy with how his first performance in the E-Series went 12 months ago. He's picked up some new equipment as well for this weekend. And they're still jostling. Still having at it, these two. So half a lap side by side. That was a tough one, that one, because Brady had nowhere to go. Here's one of the boost oh. cars is off. That's Andrew Gilliam. Jake Blackhall's involved. And now Brady Myers rear ends Andrew Gilliam, and so is James Golding. He's into the gravel too. Tough night for James Golding so far. Had one crack at the All-Star E-Series, and here he is taking on the very best in the world. He's hoping to pick up a couple of top tens, and this is definitely going to be the Novo Savage moment. There's plenty to unpick here. So Brady Myers is off the racetrack beyond the white lines, but Blacklock hasn't really given him space to rejoin. And so that is why, that's why those two have been involved in that squabble. And this continued down through Luffield. So have a look at this on the exit. What's happened here? Gilliam's made contact with Jake Blackhall, who's gone into the side of the Sid Chrome Commodore of James Golding. That's almost a five-car pile-up in at Woodcut. Jody Schechter, actually, former Formula One world champion, had an accident here at Woodcut. It was an eight-car pile-up, I believe, back in 1973. It was one of the biggest pile-ups in Formula One history at the time. A lot of cars involved. And back then, without all the safety you have these days, glad that everybody made it out alive and unscathed. Oh, and this is on in a really fast part of the racetrack. Can they get it sorted in time? This is good from Ethan Greg Gold, seeing a lot of speed out of him. He gets to the inside of Jared Philsell, but for the second straight lap, can't make it happen down at Village. This is not a happy birthday for Jared Philsell. It all started from qualifying, didn't it? It's not worked out the way he would have wanted, no doubt about that. I mean, he was top two in the championship last year. Oh, Crickle got caught on the AstroTurf and then on the grass. There was no grip. And Jake Burton grabbed that spot off him. He didn't grab it. He bullied his way yeah, past. He just took it, didn't he? And his lunch money on the way through. <laughs> Cup Cadet car behind them is Jackson Suslin Harlow. This is a four-car battle. And it's really strange to see Jared Philsell struggle to get up to speed so quickly. Running solo without a spotter. Tough spot to make the move stick. Down to Cops. Won't be happening there. And he broke his wrist earlier in the year and still managed to finish top five in the most competitive sim racing championship in the world with a broken wrist that he recently had surgery on. So wow. that was impressive, but he's been limited on practice because of that. And he's still limited on movement. Cool. I got very excited about Jackson Susan Harlow there, who was looking to make a Here move. Here we go. You're hoping you get this tonight. You can get your stat away here, the oldest and the youngest together. Did I not say it before? Yeah, here it is. They're actually on track together now. So, okay, they're right behind each other. So Job Stewart, the youngest in the field, 30th of April, 
Now, what's the year? I've got to get my notes up here. <laughs> I'm excited about this. It was your chance. 30th of April, 2004, and Josh Muggleton's 30th of April, 1987. The commonality is the two of them are the youngest and oldest drivers in the field. Click that. It. Separated by 17 years. So Job is half the age of Josh Muggleton. And Muggleton's only 33. It's not like he's old. It's just in sim racing terms. You're just saying that because you're around the same age. <laughs> a year older. So there is Job Stewart. He was on the grid last week at Bathurst as part of the uh, Toyota Gazoo Racing Australia 86 Series. He's an Erebus junior driver, which is why Erebus have handpicked him to be their star on the grid this season, which is really cool for Job, getting that level of backing. And the guy behind him, good to see Kelly Racing out there as well. Uh, and the Castrol car of Ben Smith. And that definitely wins pinkest car award of the night. Looks good. A lot of pink. It's great to see. All for a good cause. Oh, Burton's got Phil Cell and Greg Gould wants a bit of that one as well. As we uh, check out the cool Castrol pink car tonight. There's been a few cool pink supercars pop up over the years. And here's this fight. Now three wide. Oh, no. Brad Jones, Jones racing on the inside. Susan Harlow. And what is up with Jared Phil Cell tonight? Just cannot get moving. Doesn't look like himself. Well, it is himself as the camera pops up, so we know it's him at least. But certainly, there's, the luck just hasn't been on his side. Don't want to run too wide through cops. You can actually receive a time penalty via the iRacing service. That's not something Craig Dantas will distribute. Yeah. And there are incident points as well to think about. 17 of them for this race. I haven't had anyone get close enough to uh, particularly in the cage there like we did in our All-Stars E-Series where half the field were <laughs> uh, tripping the light, so to speak. This is a really good battle pack at the moment and both of those Brad Jones racing cars have done a good job to get themselves out of it and get to the front of it. So Josh Rogers currently has the Seiko 5 fastest lap and is only four oh, tenths of a go. second ahead of Warren. There is... Jared Philsell entering the lane. He'll be joined by Benjamin Smith. And this is a good strategy for Jared Philsell, but will he have to repair damage? Because look at the, the left rear of that Commodore. He had to try something into BP Ultimate pit lane. He was just struggling for speed out there. Yeah, first pit stops of the day. Jake Blackhall's also joined down the back of the pack. So this is a bit early, although I did talk about the windows today. I think about lap five is when I predicted the window to open. It's not a compulsory window. It's when we predict these drivers will come in. As now we ride on board with Job Stewart, the youngest driver in the field, attacking the oldest. Let's not get sick of that stat for the rest of the year. Just appreciate this for a moment. 16 years of age in the heat of the battle right now. Will you turn it up and enjoy the sure sounds of the game? sound and i racing have been working recently on fattening up some of that sound as well and even perfecting as he comes into the pits right now job uh the the shift cut sound as well when they're changing gears so i racing always tinkering away trying to add the realism it's not just the vision that makes this impressive constantly updated is i racing this circuit was actually fun fact for you and we'll watch this as jake burton approaches the loop it was resurfaced silverstone i think about 2018 and so there used to be a bump through the left-hander coming up. This is farm, and then you've got village, and then the next left-hander, the slow one of the loop. And what you saw was a lot of drivers actually take a wider line and deliberately miss the apex here, because there was a bump up the inside. Oh, there's as a bump. A bit forceful there, and oh. ends up... He's got to be careful. 
But yeah, after the resurfacing, iRacing have actually laser scanned that. Jake Burton will be unscathed from that lunge and a half. And will continue away as if nothing happened. I guess that was sort of self-penalizing for Jackson Susan Harlow. Yeah, he sort of jumped on the grenade a little bit there, could see what was going to happen and, and had the rears locked up trying to avoid the mess. It's a lovely shot. They actually have a similar shot when they race here. And how cool is that? Check out the, this is the massive trophy cabinet that he's got going on in the background. Helmets, trophies, a couple of state championships by the looks of it in the background, Australian kart championship trophies. That's very impressive. That'd be a bit like your trophy cabinet, wouldn't it, Jonathan? It'd look a little bit like that from yep. all your years in R-Factor and iRacing. A lot of participation trophies. <laughs> a lot of ribbons. A lot of medals, ribbons. <laughs> Most improved. <laughs> That's always the one I got. A lot of fruit platters, <laughs> baskets. I've probably uh, eaten those already, or they're expired. Not many championship trophies. I love it. Back uh, to this battle. <laughs> I just, um, I won't say it. Let's leave it at that. All right. You're on. Ben Smith. Oh, that's very wide. That could be oh, a slowdown yeah. penalty. Is he going to pick up a slowdown for that? You'll notice because he'll quite literally roll off the throttle. And there has been a tweak to how you actually uh, serve those slowdown penalties now. Yeah, what I used to do as a joke, never in a real race, I used to actually straight line and cut the entire grass section here, <laughs> gain about six seconds and then clear it in the pit stop. iRacing have clamped down on morons like me. <laughs> and you cannot clear that slowdown in the pit lane. You have to do it on the racetrack. It was a flaw that people took advantage of as more drivers are into the lane. Harley Haber, Josh Anderson, Josh Muggleton. And that's why it, it allows for a more fairer fight towards race victory. If incident points are being accumulated. You can accumulate those by off tracks, by running wide. You can receive 1x, 2x for light car contact or loss of control, 4x. 4x basically means four points. If you do hit another car, majorly or into the wall and so you're only allowed a certain amount per race. Dane Warren's accumulated the most out of anyone in the field along with Josh Muggleton. They're on nine at the moment. Riding on board with Emily Jones. Here she is, right on cue. And I should say before I mentioned it was a 17 maximum incident point for this race. It's actually 25, so excuse me. So the longer distance allows for that. So Dane Warren will be doing this tactf uh, tactfully. I think I said that right. Yeah. <laughs> As we watch Forza Al Nabi, who's definitely impressed here today, I have to say. He was down on practice. He works full time. He's very busy. And I spoke to him on Friday, and he definitely didn't look prepared, Chad. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, right. But it's a whole different story here on Tuesday night. Yeah, he's an IT network engineer. Originally from Auckland, so grew up as a massive Greg Murphy fan. And he's an Arsenal fan too, so he's my most favourite driver on the grid, oh, Forza no. El Nabi. Although Arsenal's not doing too well. Not at the moment, no. Uh, back to the front of the pack, and things are looking very good for Josh Rogers. Although he's certainly not skipped away to the tune of six seconds like he did last time. Cool to see the Midi's car running up in the podium spots. Bryce Ford picked up a podium earlier this year himself in that car. And that was at Tail and Bend, last round before we went to Bathurst. So strategy time now. If Dane Warren, he just needs to come into the pits because he will pass Josh Rogers, in my opinion, for race for the race lead. The undercut should be worth about a, what, nearly a second now? 1.2 seconds. Right okay. now, at this stage of the race, the way the tyres are working, 21 degrees Celsius track temperature, and I remember the numbers I got were in colder temperatures. So the fact that it's hotter means there's more wear to these tyres. You've got to come in right now if you're Dane Warren. I, I don't see why he's not entering the lane. And this lap come, this lap by, the next time they come towards pit entrance at Vale, he's got to do the opposite to Josh Rogers. Well, they have a team of spotters working across those cars. And I wonder if they want them to race like that. Here we go, we pick him up right now. But are you, if you're Dane Warren, would you say yes to that? I wouldn't. I would say championship. I want to win the championship. I don't care if you're my teammate. I need to pass you and I need to win this. All right, well, next time by we'll get a bit of an answer about half a lap away. We are on the, the new pit straight and the new pit complex. That's a cool angle. The struggle to get that shot in real life is though you're whipping through maggots and beckets, flicking up a little bit of dust and dirt on the inside of those curbs. He's in a perfect rhythm right now. Teammate versus teammate. Live all the way from Germany. 
man on the left hand side. Teammates also when it comes to their VRS Coanda Simsport team, which is their esports team. And Dane Warren from Melbourne, Victoria, and live in Melbourne, Victoria this weekend, the home of Walkinshaw and Dreddy United. Rogers. Oh, no. Oh, there goes the chance of the undercut. He needed to go one lap earlier. That's just boring. Come on, guys. <laughs> now, don't overshoot it. I racing, actually, that line there, the sensor's not actually. Look at everybody coming wow. at the same time. That pit party. Well, there is the chance of maybe some differentials in the pit stop times here. They do vary. That's his last hope. Can Every he jump him in this BP Ultimate pit stop? Everybody in your top nine has entered the lane. <laughs> it's like there was a safety car or something. Top ten. Is there a safety car? I'm confused because <laughs> the top ten all pitted at the same time. Now Andrew Gilliam's entered. Brady Myers is the only driver not to enter the lane. <laughs> who's gonna... It's remarkable. Everyone's like, I'll choose strategy A today. The difficulty of this chat is actually spotting your box because you've got all these cars visually that are, are hampering your, your vision. Yeah. Let's see who takes the lead here. Brady Myers has the effective, has the uh, the race lead, but who's going to have the effective lead? Is that Warren ahead? Uh, no, no, he's behind. Josh was just really quick through that pit stop, if anything, quicker. And yeah, it was four tenths of a second quicker. Quickest off pit road out of all of those drivers that time by was Cooper Webster, 9.9 .9 seconds, 9.7 seconds. So he had the quickest out of that front pack. Wasn't quite enough to make up any positions, though. That was remarkable. They oh, all, they all ended up in the same pot. You know why? Because they had to all react to one another. Because the undercut's worth so much. By one person pitting, you've got to react to the other. And so they've all reacted to each other and come into the lane. That's the worst way this race could have played out entertainment-wise. But we've still got a cracker of a finish because now the gaps between each driver, everyone's really separated by half a second. So you've got about your top 10, all in contention, I would say, for big points. Look at the gaps on the left-hand side of screen. Well, this track is pretty tough on tyres, and there is still quite a long way to go. So it's, once the tyre degradation gets to a certain point, it plateaus. And still, these two are going at it. He's going to sign his name down the side of that car tonight, Ethan Grigault. They have beaten each other up lap after lap. Look at the state of these two. And still they go at it, and another hip and shoulder going through cops. And Ethan Grigault gets him for the second time tonight. I think Phil Sell's got damage because he's been nowhere this race since lap one. And you can see there's... Oh, oh goodness, that's not a passing spot. He's well, going to make for it a passing spot. It is for Verstappen and it is for Phil Sell. That was a pretty uh, wild spot to be putting on a bump. He nearly made it work. Down the hangar straight. Now he's always... No, oh, nearly had some overlap. Covered off very aggressively by Ethan Grigault. Benjamin Smith in this fight now. And he might be able to get to the inside of the Red Bull Holden Racing Team car. Another hip and shoulder, and this oh, time no. Smith whacks him on the way through. And Jared Philsell's having a night out. Can we congratulate as well Rick Kelly on a successful yes. career? After he announced his retirement during the week. Kelly Racing, we're looking at the Kelly Racing car right now, Ben Smith. Two Bathurst wins and a championship. Not a bad way to sign off for Rick Kelly. Hopefully we get to see him back as a co-driver somewhere as well. Plenty of rumours abound at the moment in the Repco Supercars Championship as well. Who's going to be driving where? Who's going to fill Scott McLaughlin's seat? That's just about the only thing we don't know at the moment is the car 17 is gone and who's going to be in that car? There is Ben Smith working away at the moment. Oh, he's he's, he's got to run here. Yeah, well, Phil Cell might be able to get him back yet. Oh, excuse me, yeah, Phil Sell, I mean, has yeah. a, got to run on Benny Smith. Now, great overtaking spot is Brooklyn's. There's a multitude of lines you can take through here. You can take a late, a late apex, point it at the apex, and then the exit into here sets up the entry into this next right-hander at Luffield. This is a great opportunity for Phil Sell to launch it up the inside. He pokes a nose there, which will hamper the exit for Ben Smith. Now, if you can get a nose up the inside here at Cops, you're allowed to cut the track here at Woodcote. That's allowed, right up close to the barrier. Phil Sell might be able to make this move under braking. He needs to form up, though. Doesn't have the run on the Kelly Racing driver. Ben's got plenty of uh, Hyundai Excel experience as well, so a little bit of real-world fun. He runs the number 151 in his Excel, so he's brought that across to the E-Series as well. 25 years of age, and the pressure that Phil Sell is pouring onto the back of that Mustang as they go through Maggots and Beckett's and back onto the Hangar Straight. This truck originally an airfield back in World War II, which is how it eventually became a racetrack, as just about every single racetrack in Great Britain at some point was. And that's why this straight is called the Hangar Straight. Makes a lot of sense. Where the planes once used to sit 
and go to sleep during the night. I like that. There's nothing sleepy about this battle at the moment. Phil Cell, he seems fired up tonight, but cannot get the speed out of that car. They are using um, yeah, pretty much set setups, aren't they, across the field as well? Or? Oh, as you said that, sorry, Whoops. Josh Muggleton's had a moment Just in the background. The background. And I think that was uh, up on approach to Vale. To Vale, that would have been. Downhill braking zone into there, so I'm not surprised because it's so difficult to get this car stopped. You can lock up that front left tyre as it gets unloaded. What were you saying before, sorry, Chad, with um, the setup? Yes, are they using the same setups across the field? I know you're allowed to dial in a little bit of brake bias and also anti roll oh. Yeah, yeah, so the setup is provided by supercars. It's essentially the baseline setup with 65 litres of fuel in the tank that they can't change. You can adjust the brake bias. Originally, it's set to 56, which is insane. Most drivers <laughs> will run about 48 is the lowest I've heard from one driver to upwards of about 52, 53. Uh, that's percentage to the front Okay. Uh, that the bias is allocated to. But you cannot adjust the anti-roll bars, which you can normally do on board in a supercar, whether you're in the Mustang or the Commodore. But you can't do it in this fixed setup during the race. So it's all about your driving skill. And the best of the best, the cream, will rise to the top. And I hate saying that because it is a cliched phrase. Yeah, well, it's also true in this case at the moment. So, so far in the race, we spoke about Rogers and Warren, which I'm still still mesmerized by how Warren didn't decide to do the opposite to his teammate. I certainly would have. Maybe I'm a little bit more savage, but we'll see come the next five rounds how that championship plays out between the two. Madison Downs had a good event. Jordan Caruso's up two positions for Repco Racing, the number one pick coming out of the E-Series draft. Forza and Al Nabi down one spot from his starting position in fifth, but he's had a good round. Now, I, I haven't seen the live points, but I won't be surprised if once they're all calculated, Forza and Al Nabi comes home third in overall points at the end of this. And then the rest of the top 10 have had some very impressive races this round. Cooper Webster, Richard Hampstead, who is, I've heard during the past few months and weeks that he's ever improved compared to last year, Chad. Yeah, well, hit number one in the draft, certainly a sign of that. Yep, came exactly. Highest scoring driver. Not selected number one. I don't think that, was, that went to Caruso, Caruso obviously. Yep. But and highest rank there as well. I just want to give one more big shout out tonight for the Pink Fund Racer. It's been a lot of fun doing this. Our goal is to get to $20,000 tonight. We're currently sitting at 15767 I've got the live number in front of me. I'm watching it tick up throughout the course of the night. So this is fantastic work, everybody. Breast Cancer Trials is our foundation partner of the night. And you can pick which car you want to donate to. Emily Jones is still whipping everybody at the moment, over three, nearly $4,000. So pick a car that you want to donate some money to. It all goes to the same place in the end. And help us get to our goal of 20,000 uh, bucks, which equals that number of 20,000 Australians diagnosed every year with breast cancer. Good fight, this one. Very interesting because last year, remember, Jake Burton joked after a race asking Brad Jones <laughs> for a Super 3 drive. And then a few weeks after the series concluded, got to test in the main game car, in a supercar. Yeah. A lot of drivers there that day. I think Jordan Boyce was at the test, if I'm not mistaken. Nick was. Perkat was there as well. Brilliant opportunity for Burton to How showcase cool that. Like they came yeah. out from a race win that he had in this championship. And he looked down the barrel of the lens just about and said, Brad Jones, please give me a drive of a supercar. And Brad actually did it, which is really, really cool. So he had a test day out at Winton. And then the guy he's chasing right now, Harley Haber, well, he's actually competed in Super 3 as well. Harley doing a pretty good job here this weekend. He won the very last race of our All-Star E-Series at Bathurst. Uh, haven't seen the best of him yet tonight. Currently sitting eighth at the moment. Has won plenty of online championships oh. himself. It's under fire right now from Burton. And look how the elevation changed. It's, it used to be an airfield, so there's not that much elevation, but through Club Corner and on the exit, it's downhill. Look at the curb on the left. I'm surprised Haber uses it. Burton doesn't use the curb, and the reason is that curb actually can bottom out the car. This reminds me a lot of Stoner Corner into Honda at Phillip Island. It's hard to get the car to the left-hand side. Slow down for this right-hander. Burton's got to run here. He forces Haber to the defensive. If he undercuts him just like that, he'll get a good run coming out of the corner. And this should be an overtake into Brooklyn's. This is pretty good racing so far. And that's just a little bit of a moment there for Haber. Drop the right sides off. He has to go defensive. 
as they climb up towards the big left hand and stop at the end of the Wellington straight. He hangs on to it for now. Is there a chance at Luffield as he runs wide? He's got a bump and run here. Come on, Jake. Yeah, he's, he's working the bumper, working the bumper through the right hander. It's looking like a young Warren Luff down there, Harley Haber at the moment. Fit in with Chas Mostert. Harley exotic. Yeah, I like it. There's a bit of a rivalry between these two. And they're racing like they don't like each other at the moment. We don't mind a bit of a rivalry in the eSports arena. And this is pretty cool as Burton continues to pour on this pressure. What if Haber goes, he should have dyed his hair pink. Would it work for tonight? Pink fundraiser. Match the wheels. Yeah, exactly. Now there's a chance here if you can tuck in behind him up the hangar straight. What a cool shot that is as they weave their way up towards Hangar Straight right now. And at the top of the hill, there'll be a big chance when they dive into Stowe. So this is an entire lap of squabbling between these two. On the defensive goes Haber. Mentally, that's a win for Burton if you're forcing him onto the defensive. He's got Chris Radisic in his corner, brother of Paul Radisic, in the Kubota racing car. New car salesman at Mazda. I love that everyone, most of these drivers out there oh. have day jobs. Don't want to touch the curve oh. through there. How's the revs just low and patient onto the front straight once again? Look at that. Burton short shifted and was still fighting the wheel. There's no grip on those rear Dunlop rubber. I think Dunlop Racing, Dunlop has the best sponsor plug for the E-Series because if the tyres do well, they get all the credit. And if they don't, it was virtual rubber. They never yeah. manufactured it. It was the driver's fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for pitting too early. They've got the best plug. So 21-year-old Harley Haber fighting away here with 21-year-old Jake Burton. How's this for a brave move? He's originally from Perth, WA, moved to Melbourne this year in the middle of COVID. Well, That's having a crack right there. I told him, he, he, <laughs> don't buy lottery tickets, mate. I think as soon as he moved, we went into stage four about yeah. two weeks later. Here we go, back onto this awesome fight. And Madison Down and Jordan Caruso, they're fighting over a podium right now. Love that aggressive line onto the old front straight. Caruso's close enough. Can he get through in the Brad Jones racing car? Mustang versus Commodore. And that was just about at the track limit's edge for Madison Down. Good chance to work the way into our top three. The Lenovo top performers tonight. Be a chance to vote on Facebook for that tomorrow. Bring you all the details you need to know at the end of the show. And this is really close down Hangar Straight. Does Madison down go defensive? Not too defensive, he's just sort of in the middle of the road and he left himself vulnerable to a really late move from Jordan Caruso. And that was awesome. The door was open and they give each other some more racing room at the exit. It's not done yet. Into Vale. Sublime scrap between these two. This is where Sebastian Vettel ran up the rear end of Verstappen in 2019. And then coming out of this corner, remember, Lewis Hamilton had the punctured tyre and the iconic finish where he won the race with three wheels. Incredible. That was amazing. That was one of those nights we go, I'm so glad I stayed up for this. <laughs> I remember you <laughs> tweeting that. Yeah. That was all time. Fight is on for third. Madison down versus Jordan Caruso. Oh, go up the inside. He's got to. Whoa, that's aggressive. Can he get it stopped? Through the loop. He's got the overlap for the next long left hand, but he won't be able to stay there. What a scrap. This is awesome. Can Down get that car moved across? No. The Repco Mustang's there. There's overlap. There's enough. And he's going to turn that small gap into a big one. Down at the left hander, he moves through. Great move. Well worked. Great sportsmanship and racecraft at play. And they were pushing each other virtually for the best part of a lap then. And Caruso got the job done. He moves to third. What a cracking battle. And we've had a cracker of a race after the pit stops. Caruso, the 20 year old from Traralgon. Oh, look at Madison oh, down. Was He's late. locked up. And really late. We head to the Repco race replay. This is the move. I want to see what happens to Madison at the exit of Cop Cops after this. But look at how, how much he's squirreling under the power. There's no traction coming out of the corner. And then across the Wellington straight here, Chad, this is a simple move once you're up the inside. You just force Madison offline, run him off the track. Easy position for him onto the podium. And El Nabi was seven tenths of a second quicker than the both of them because of that battle. So don't write off the BP Ultimate. Mustang in the background, that's got the pink on the bonnet. 
Al Nabi's had a pretty good night so far. One podium to his name. Drove well in the reverse grid race. And another top five coming his way here. Well, his rear tyres look a bit shot as well. And remember, Caruso's up six, uh, three positions this race after starting sixth. So this has been hardly fought for him. I mean, you know what I mean? Yep, he's I fought hard for it. Yeah, other big moves. Uh, Ethan Grigor who started further down the pack and managed to go from 17th to 11th. So that's a nice drive, which included passing Jared Philsell about 20 times. And he started down the order, unfortunately, due to his poor race one showing after he was involved in that accident on lap one. Here's Jake Burton up the inside of Haber. That's not an overtaking oh. spot into Abbey, but he could get him here into UK's Honda. <laughs> nice. He spooked Haber out of an apex down there at turn one. Pouring the pressure on here. Working the wheel, watching Jake Burton at work here. Racing from Melbourne, he's got the Virtual Racing School Direct Force Pro Wheel at the moment, which is a test unit that he's been developing. So these guys are on not just at the cutting edge of sim racing, but the technology as well. That's a very popular wheel, very expensive though. So I'd be glad if they sent me one to my address after this race. Yeah, not bad at all. He's Harley Haber working away at the moment in the Kubota car. He's looking pretty cool about things at the moment. Lives in Oran Park, famous part of the world for race fans. Did that place used to have a racetrack? Some once upon a time. And yes, it is an iRacing as well, which is pretty <laughs> cool. Going to have a couple of Aussie tracks popping up. Phillip Island, of course, and Bathurst, Mount Panorama. You cannot have an E-Series without racing at Bathurst. Always turns it on. The race has been relatively straightforward for your top two, but credit to Dane Warren, who's remained within a second. Josh Rogers for the entirety of this race. After we saw what happened in race one, it's all down to qualifying now. That's critical. I was a bit disappointed looking at the qualifying times for for a couple of our front runners, but I was excited from an entertainment perspective. It's given us a, a cracker of an event. I've thoroughly enjoyed round one of our 2020 E series. Yeah, it's been cool. Uh, coin qualifying in particular was really close. Just to highlight the fact about seven or eight tenths covered the entire 22 car field so it was extremely close and so if you're a tenth or two off the pace you're losing rows for your first starting position enjoyed the uh, Seiko 5 shootout as well that was cool two lap sprint rolling start heat race style bit like the old dash for cash for the supercars fans back in the 90s Josh Rogers actually quick fact he's I think he's in like a granny flat or something that's not actually like a, a big house so they have a huge I don't know it's like a mansion I think I don't know <laughs> don't know how rich they are but it's like a bit of a granny flat in the back where they've set up that purple room that may remind you of Barney yeah it's uh, a pretty cool setup for the full Coanda team that races out of Germany various Coanda Sim Sport and we sing the guy's praises but he's won just about everything there is to win he was the 2019 VRS GT World Champion, 2019 Porsche E Super Cup Champion, where he cleaned up $50,000 for winning that one. Won the first round, uh, first E Series iRacing Championship here for Supercars, which was last season. He's had a pretty good run in V8 Scops, which is the other online series that they do, but he's won the big races. He's won the iRacing Spa, Nürburgring, Daytona, Le Mans 24 hour races, Sebring 12 hour, Bathurst 12 hour all the big iconic iRacing events he has won them he is in the top three if maybe not even the top one when it comes to world rankings he is so quick in a sim and he is just going straight back to work and this is exactly why ryan walkinshaw handpicked him to lead this team and has put dane warren alongside him and it looks to be a smooth move at the moment because they seem to be head and shoulders above everyone else so cool to see all of the Supercars teams embrace the Repco Supercars Pro E-Series. But once again, it's Walkinshaw and Andretti United who look too strong for everyone. And at the front, it's Josh Rogers again. Two wins on the opening night. And he takes 150 points in the championship lead off to the second week next Tuesday. Well done to Josh Rogers. Well done, Dane Warren. They have been clearly the two fastest. Jordan Caruso picks up his first podium. Nicely done to the number one draft pick. Madison Down will be inside the top five on points as we leave here. Good to see the sponsor boards looking a little bit better. Fix that camber issue that they had a little earlier on. Jordan Caruso looks pretty happy with that one. Everyone's chatting up a storm on the Discord. 
Chad, it took you half a lap to name off all of his accomplishments, and he turns 21 in December this year. <laughs> I think it took you three quarters of a lap to do scary, that. isn't it? That's a good point. And that's his second win here at Silverstone in the Supercars E-Series. You can't touch this kid at the moment. He's just too quick. And here's your Repco race results. You know who on top, Josh Rogers. Just the 1.1 seconds. Dane Warren kept him honest, but couldn't quite strategize his way to the front. Nice move late in the race. Jordan Caruso for Repco getting that spot over Madison down. Forzen El Nabi inside the top five. Nice job to Forzen. Uh, Josh Muggleton outside the top 15. Jackson Susan Harlow had some pretty epic fights there. Jared Philsell, a weird miss for him tonight. Not too sure what's going on there. We'll try and bring you more on that one next week. And Emily Jones rounds out your 22. Repco highlights on what was a really busy race around Silverstone. It was an all Walkinshaw Andretti United front row. And uh, with the Walkinshaw name dating back to the UK and guys like Zach Smith as well, they would have been pretty happy to see uh, such success on the opening night of the championship at Silverstone. Busy, busy, busy start to that one going through the loop. Good battle earlier between Blacklock and Myers, which unfortunately ended in this moment. An awkward one at that, and it continued on for a few more corners. This was a hefty whack between Bam. four or five cars. I think the Penske car just made it out of the way there of Sam Blacklock. The Shelby Power Racing car remained unscathed. That was Jackson Suzlin Harlow forcefully trying to make his way up the inside. Just lost control. Here was a pit party. I think the entire supercars field for the past five years entered the lane at the same time. Josh Muggleton running deep with a bit of contact there into Vale. And a great battle here. Great scrap between Madison down and Jordan Caruso. This was battle of the race for me. These two continued squabbling all the way down to Brooklands, where Madison Down eventually conceded that podium to Jordan Caruso. And at the end of the day, two out of three ain't bad for Josh Rogers. And he is straight back to the top. Your championship leader from last year on the Repco highlights, celebrating in style and bringing it up to 150 points down to the 75 that he picked up earlier. Drove brilliantly in the reverse grid race as well. So he is the man. Jonathan, can anyone touch that guy? We're going to see some pretty different formats throughout the course of the year, different tracks, hopefully an oval coming back a bit later as well. Is yeah. that going to maybe mix things up for him? Yeah, definitely. I think the more we do, the, the better off we're going to be with this championship. It's going to be much more competitive if we challenge Josh Rogers, but everybody else now has to raise their game knowing the times this young man's producing. All right, well done uh, to Josh Rogers on what's been a massive night. Obviously, we're going to pick him for one of our three in our Lenovo top performer. So it's going to be Josh Rogers, uh, Dane Warren and Madison Down. They're the three drivers to be our Lenovo top performers. Head to Facebook tomorrow and vote on your favourite driver there. Who do you think was the Lenovo top performer for round number one? Well done, Jonathan. Great to have your company here. Thanks for watching. This has been a great, great start to what's been an awesome championship return. It's the Repco Pro Supercars E-Series. It's back for another big six nights, and we're going to see you another seven days back live once again. Supercars Pro E Series, the very best in the world. One of the boost oh. cars is off. That's Andrew Gilliam. Jake Blackhall's involved. There was a bump up the inside. Oh, a, bump. Arlo, a bit forceful there. Josh Rogers, put your hands up for Detroit. Repco Supercars Pro E-Series is proudly brought to you by Pagnion, official reseller of Next Level Racing and Thrustmaster products.